add it to ah yes here we go. Okay, game capture. Nope. Oh my god. How did I do this before? <laughs> this is so this is so amateur, it's okay. Um there was a way for me. The best thing I could do, really, mean screen share. Mean screen share? Change capture. Oh, okay, here we go. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. All right, here we go. Done. All right, cool. Rich, do you see the game now? All right, well, I'm going to assume that it's working. Uh, for my preview, it looks like I can check the uh, the game, and uh, they're still chatting. All right, so we got our game between uh, Steve and Bogler. Uh, two Canadian players, as I recall. This is round one for the Great Canadian Open. Uh, let's see here. Let's double check. Just curious. Is Bogler a fellow Canadian? And he is. Cool. He's actually the only free folk player as well. So I'm just checking through... Okay, so it seems like they're just talking right now. So maybe I can switch the background back to um, Chrome and we can discuss their lists real quick and do a quick prediction. Okay, so I think I'll try that. All right, so let me uh, switch over here. Let me... How did I do this last time? Oh my gosh, okay. Uh, not edit. Is it this one? Nope. Nope. That's not what I want. Okay, hold on. Oh, they've already spawned. Never mind. Okay, so maybe I'll just jump into the game. Okay, so we've got honed and ready as a scenario, and um, Steve has chosen his non Mother Dragons list. So he's got Cal uh, Drogo with Blood Riders, unsurprisingly. We got Flayed Men. We've got uh, Stormcore Mercenaries of Brawn, and we've got Stormcore Mercenaries with a Stormcore Lieutenant. So it looks like one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven activations. We got the uh, usual suspects, Tycho, uh, Lirio for all the healing, and some Peter. Peter's kind of an interesting choice. Uh, not super. Oh, I guess. Never mind. I take it back. He's got Peter and he's got Brawn. So he's got the triple shot combo going on now with the archers so for anyone who doesn't know the triple shot combo this is actually something that my friend rich pointed out to me i always thought that Braun had overlap with peter but it, i didn't realize how what you can do is when you have um peter baelish you can essentially get three shots a turn so Braun to shoot off the bag and the sword so if you put Peter onto the envelope, for example, you can use the sword. You get the envelope's benefit of the vulnerable token, and then um, you still have the sword and the bag open for Braun to use, and then you have their actual activation. So this is actually the triple shot, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Some pretty good support fire. Um, his other list was Mother Dragons, and I wasn't really sure. I didn't think too hard about what he might use in this particular scenario, but... Um, Part of me thought he might just use Mother Dragons and just kill, you know. The the dragons aren't particularly good in this scenario because you don't want to hold objectives. But often I find with Mother Dragons you don't want to hold objectives anyway. Um, and just want to kill your opponent. But he has gone for a bit more reliable build, I suppose, of units that can actually hold the objectives. That's Steve. <clears throat> and going over now to uh, Bogler, we've got... Let's see here. Looks like we got uh, Commander Mance in Trappers. We've got... Couple units of raiders, of raid leaders. We've got three, three units of raiders, of raid leaders. We've got another unit of trappers, and we've got spearwives with um, attachment harma. So I believe she has a settle order, which is very handy, and she also has I can't remember what it's called, but she gives a plus one movement, and they may pivot before marching, which gives this unit a lot of mobility. And um, this unit is really, really like the linchpin I find in a lot of free folk lists because. Um, when you play coordination tactics, um, you get to take advantage of coordinated assaults, um, which means that any unit nearby can really charge in with three extra hits, which can do a lot of damage. Now, does he have Styre? He does, of course, yeah. So he's got probably the 
the you know most reliable three NCUs here, which is Val, Ygritte, and Steyr. Um, basically, um, you know, Val lets you change third zone, which is the most useless zone typically in a three versus three NCU matchup, into a horse maneuver. And uh, you've got Ygritte. Ygritte um, just is you know great for uh, slowing down your opponent or boosting your speed. If you use the right terrain, like corpse piles and bogs, it also lets you avoid the negatives while giving your opponents the negatives. Bogs are really important in, in preventing a lot of damage for people as well. So super handy to have bogs, and Ygritte lets you ignore the penalty of having bogs. And then start just lets you add damage, you know, and... You know, you should really be careful because Free Folk Raiders have six attacks hitting on fours. With Stire, it becomes seven attacks with Sundering hitting on fours. And then the Raid Leader, if you're comboing, it becomes eight attacks hitting on threes with Sundering. So your lowly four point insignificant unit can really cause a lot of damage. So um, let me just check here. His other list, I'm just wondering, like, Mance, I think it's just a, such a solid pick. You know, having that morale five bubble is such a good thing. Um, I'm not surprised he's taking Mads. I'm just curious what his other list was. Uh, so he also has... He's actually running double Mance. So he's using Mance either way. I'm just curious if his other list is different. Uh, it's different. Yeah, he's got Mance and Trappers instead. <clears throat> Same three blocks of Raiders. Um, ooh, interesting. So he's got Spearwives with Tormund, who gives them Warcry, um, and Frozen Shore Chariot in the second list. So... A little bit different um, of a build. Let me just think here. He has more trappers here, essentially. Oh, actually, sorry, Mance is already in trappers. So yeah, he he swaps out the second year trappers for the Frozen Shore Chariot, and he swaps Harma for Tormund. So really very similar. Um, his other list also has um, Val and Stars and Seas, but he also has Craster for a bit of extra healing and a bit of extra card draw. So really not terribly different. Um, I guess the second list is a bit more offensive with the combination of uh, Warcry and the Frozen Shore Chariot. And uh, yeah, it's got a little more punch. But this one, I guess, um, is a little bit, a bit more of a quote-unquote standard kind of list. So he's got uh, six, nine activations here. So the highest activation count by far, nine versus seven, is going to be very interesting to see if he can leverage that advantage to uh, grind down the opposing units. Um, you know, Flamen are scary, but if they get hit two or three times with multiple attacks with Gang Up, you know, even Flamen will go down. So I'm curious to see how that goes. So we got the first terrain piece going down. We got a corpse pile. And um, I'm imagining that's probably uh, placed by Steve. And uh, interesting placement, um, not central. You know, and that's going to polarize the, the battlefield right away. So I'm interested to, to see where his second crane piece goes. And as a reaction piece, it looks like uh, Boggler's pulling out a Weirwood. Very typical. And uh, yeah, because Steve did not put it over the center, looks like Boggler will put it over the center, which is where you imagine you want it. Now, Steve might have a plan. Steve's plan by this placement could be to go downfield hard with his units. So maybe he's not planning on fighting around the center. This could be the reason for that. <clears throat> All right, and while, while they're thinking about that, I'm going to just quickly double check to see if things are happening here. Okay. I think I've got some bots chatting in my stream here. That's okay. Okay, so the weirwood goes down. I imagine Steve will put down another um, corpse pile, and I imagine that uh, Boggler will respond with another weirwood. So I wonder if Steve is going to place it uh, opposite. Um, so that he'll always have a downfield horse pile to work off of. You know what? Maybe my stream is my head way too big. My head looks kind of too big. Maybe we can string my head a little bit here. Uh, oh man. Yeah, this... I'm just going to pop my head in the corner and shrink it a little bit. There we go. 
strength is so intuitive. It's pretty sweet. Okay, back to the game. Um, are they pulling out the stuff? Ooh, pulling out a bog. Interesting. Yeah, the uh, 3D terrain sometimes is a bit uh, tricky to pull out for whatever reason. Though Steve is the host, he should have less less bugs. Interestingly, pulls out a bog and not a corpse pile. Makes me wonder, you know, why one over the other? Um, obviously, they're both similar in that the defensive pieces, in that they have hindering. Um, the corpse pile has the obvious added advantage of horrific. So it makes me wonder, why was the corpse pile good as a first drop, but not as a second drop? And very interesting here that Steve is um, loading the, uh, you know, defensive terrain onto one side uh in a way it makes that decision for first player second player more relevant but also means that you know if you want the terrain on your opponent's side you know you're you're really banking on on dice off here right because if he wins and forces you to take this side then all that uh negatives you're trying to put on his side is going to not work so very uh very interesting and as a counter pick um, Bog puts down his own Bog, which, again, I've already mentioned, is very good for Free Folk because it um, provides a hindering keyword to reduce the damage that goes in. And Steve does not have Danny Khaleesi either. So normally the Bog is not a huge issue because sometimes instead of Peter, Danny's taken, and Danny gets you re-rolls anyway. So you don't care about the Bog, but Steve does not have P uh, Khaleesi in this case. So we've got two Bogs, which... Uh, I imagine will play a role, you know. I, I imagine if Bogo knows what he's doing, he's going to use them as uh, defensive pieces to uh, minimize charge damage. Though their placement is a little far back, so we'll see if he can really take advantage of those. Okay, while they're starting to deploy things, I'm going to see if I can share my link onto the Facebook groups. So I do apologize. I can hear them deploying things. I will get to that very quickly as soon as I put up some posts here. Um, you know what? There is a way for me to access these a little faster. Ah, here we go. to post this up in the Montreal group, of course. Montreal, 
lastly, up on the main song group. I think this is it. Yeah, this is it. Cool. All right, so that should be the last post. All right, away with you, Facebook. And back to the game. Oopsies. Okay, so each player has dropped two things. Uh, the free folk player, Bogger, with uh, the activation advantage, of course, is going to be able to put down his cheap units first. Uh, and he has done so. He's put down a bunch of raiders. Looks like he also... Looks like they diced off. And it looks like um, Steve made Bogger choose side. So Bogger chose a side of less bad terrain. Um, each side really has a bog, so he just chose a pile without the side without a corpse pile. And he's dropped down three of his basic raider units with raid leaders. Whereas Steve has had to... Uh, you know, commit some more important things because he has less activations. So, uh, unsurprisingly, he's put down his Storm for Mercenaries, and he's put down his Flame in his second choice. And that makes sense because, really, in this scenario, his best units are uh, the Blood Riders, who can go around killing, you know, attachments like the enemy commander. And really, I think this is going to be a very influential unit as well um, because this unit can sh literally shoot three times. It has the potential to kill a unit around based on panic checks. You know, Mance Raider will be important. Um, and in this scenario, too, it's interesting because of the uh, the, the X pattern of the uh, objectives. If Mance does not hold... An if Mance holds an objective, his influence will actually be very, very small in the corner, which will give Steve an opportunity to pick off units outside of Mance's bubble. And if Mance doesn't go for the objective... Um, then, you know, the scoring obviously will uh, be a little bit closer. Um, I imagine Steve's going to play very aggressive with only four units. Um, he's not going to be banking on holding two objectives and testing the center. I imagine he's going to be going for more pushy opponent back off objectives, you know, kill Mance, try and go for the significant units, i.e. the Trappers and the Spearwives, and hopefully not get bogged down too badly by, um, by Raiders. We saw uh, Bogger here put down some spare trays, just do some spacing. Looks like he's just making sure he can put down two trays between his um, three deployed trays. And very interesting here, Steve is actually putting down Cal Drogo. Um, and, you know, the reason why it's interesting for me, because I typically put my commander last, but Drogo is such a fast unit. And again, the, his real damage might come from his um, archers. Now, it's unfortunate because really he wants to place them opposite from wherever Mance Raider might be. But, um, you know, because he's so heavily out-activated, he really can't predict that. No matter where he puts the archers, if he puts them on the left side, let's see. Oh, oh cool, it's the, uh, the uh, tokens. If he puts the archers on the left side, Mance can go to the left side. If he puts them more central, Mance can go central. You know, so Mance can always be placed across from the archers. But again, it does limit his options on um, which objectives he might want to hold. In fact, looking more carefully, he's already kind of put units across from the corner objectives, and it makes you wonder if he's going to um, even put Mance on a corner objective now. He can definitely rearrange things with, you know, two turns of movement, um, especially with Val. He can get these rear units off the corners and push Mance on, but he, he might be just using Mance to minimize damage <clears throat> and bog down, you know, Blood Riders and Flate Men. Okay, cool. Okay, so the archers have decided to commit onto the left side. And I'm just trying to think, you know, in Steve's mind, why is this wise? I guess it's because, you know, he hasn't put Mance down yet. And if Mance was to go down, he either goes here in this gap or over here. Now, Mance could go back here. And this is actually not terrible because these units can easily push forward and march past this objective uh, by round two, and Mance could grab it. This actually might be the spot to put Mance, to be honest. You know, Flamen are on this side as well. Um, you could try and put Mance in this pocket here, have these two units just march aggressively up, and put Mance in this objective. 
It's arguable, though, if Mance is really a good counter to Flademan, because with the minus three, um, even at morale five, you're likely to fail. So, um, you know, sometimes it's kind of like a lost cause when your opponent has too many negatives to have good morale around it. Okay, so uh, Steve is fully committed. Just to recap what he's got for anyone who joined the stream a little bit late, we've got Brawn with Stormcrow Archers, we've got Flademen, we've got Drogo and Blood Riders, and we've got uh, Stormcrow Mercs with a Lieutenant. His NCUs are the Healers. We've got Tycho, Illyrio, and Peter Baelish. Peter Baelish is here for the triple shot, I imagine, on the Stormcrow Archers. He'll probably take the Envelope to take a shot off the Sword. Then he's got Bag and Sword open for a second shot, and then their Activation for a third shot. Um, on Boggler's side, we've got one, two, three units of Naked Raiders with a Raid Leader. We've got Harma with Spearwives with the extra mobility. We've got um, Trappers, and we've got Mance Trappers. So that's six activations on the table. He's already preloaded. I'm not sure why these guys are here, but uh, I thought that was a unit of Raiders for the uh, inevitable... Endless Horde card. And then for his NCUs, we have uh, Val, Ygret, and Steyr. Uh, the classic three, I'd say. You know, extra mobility, extra punch, and just utility in terms of extra movement or hindering movement or gaining, you know, hindering bonuses. <clears throat> All right, so looks like both players have deployed. We've got our scenario hone ready. Five objectives, no, no special cards, but holding objectives starting round two and onwards means you get hit by arrows very very nasty against free folk who are uh you know less armored okay so looks like both players are drawing their first three cards looking through now steve i'm pretty sure gave um bog with the choice of side so i imagine steve has the option to go first or second um in this kind of scenario i typically like to go first um because round three tends to be the most important round where you can start objectives. It's a bit of a different scenario here because um, of the activation disadvantage he's at. He's at nine versus seven. So he's never going to have a tempo turn early where he gets the last say and the first say. Um, but with his mobility on the Blood Riders and the Flademan, he can definitely charge in round two, maybe into a unit that's already activated. Um, and then hopefully get a, 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 sec a round of attacks round three. But it's it's tough being so heavily activated. You know, you know Bogler will definitely have um, retreat options available to him to prevent a sword attack potentially. So again, yeah, not sure who's got the option here. They're both kind of still. Deliberating looks like it looks like Bogler is going to be going first. Actually, you know, based on the his hand motion going towards the NCUs, it looks like Bogler might be going first. They could be having a discussion right now as well. And let us see. All right, while they're deliberating, I'm just going to check my stream real fast. First time streaming, folks, so uh, I do apologize. Oh, <laughs> got some chatting going on. Um, <laughs> will I have a new... Um, oh, can I see that? No, I can't. I have to be on... I was actually in the game moving around. So, uh, okay. So, let's see here. Um, will I have a new Breath and Podcast? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, it was a lot of fun making it. I do like talking about games, so we will see. Um Definitely talk to Mickey and Carl, see if they will uh, have, me, have me again for another chat here. So Mickey's talking about naked trappers, um, hanging around your mance. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's definitely uh, those <laughs> those Stormcrow mercs on the right side look pretty lonely. Okay, so it looks like uh, Bog was going first, and uh, no surprises here. He's taking Ygret onto the envelope. Uh, drawing some extra cards, and what will he influence? Now, again, you know, Mickey's in the chat, so he's got way more experience than I do. Um, at this point in the game, okay, so he's influencing Harma's unit. Okay, that makes sense. You know, Harma's already got the extra mobility. 
Um, I believe, can I zoom in on cards here? Yeah, so she's already got plus one movement. Now it's plus two movement. This now moves seven, and they can pivot for marching, so they can march 14. And he's, she's got Val, so you can move 21 inches. This you can redeploy very quickly to maybe shore up that left side that's uh, a little weak um, to, you know, the triple shot, Storm Crows, and uh, Flayed Men. And uh, he's put a weaken on Drogo, and he's drawing his extra cards. Now, I don't know about the weaken on Drogo, because Drogo's unit ultimately does not hit very hard. You know, this is actually a very big misconception, I think, with the Blood Riders. They're an excellent unit. I think they are, like, really, really strong, a must-have. But what makes them really strong is their durability, you know, and... Um, it's not their hitting power. You know, at the end of the day, yes, they have expert duelists, so they're going to be doing a wound a turn at a minimum. But really, otherwise, it's seven attacks hitting on threes. No sundering, no crit blow, no vicious built in. They have cards, of course, that can grant them these abilities, but they're not really that hard hitting. I personally may have weakened the Flayed Men, um, especially because their initial charge has critical blow. So I wonder, I wonder if this is a bit of lack of experience. It's not so important to weaken this because they'll already get the auto wound from Groko. So yeah, we will see. All right, so Steve, in response, is doing some measuring. Okay, so while he's measuring, I'm going to check the Twitch chat real fast. Yeah. And he's just doing a straight march. Interesting. So instead of going to the tactics board, he's going to a straight march. Now, if he actually does this, this is a misplay because he's going on to the objective which is bad. Bad because there's no advantage to taking the objective round one. And he's putting himself at risk of getting shot by the tactics board. Um, you know, the tactics board isn't super important round one after the envelope and the horse. So your opponent could be very happy to take the bags and just shoot you full of arrows. So I don't know if he's had a lot of experience in this scenario, but this is actually a very big misplay to jump on an objective with your first activation without going to the board first and taking away zones. So that's, that's a serious misplay in my opinion, and Bogler can take advantage by taking the bags and just shooting him full of arrows. I don't know if he wants to save Val for a redeploy with um, uh, Harma, but you know I would definitely punish the squishy unit of 5 plus save archers with a double hail of arrows. Alright, I wonder how Bogler will respond. That was pretty, that's a pretty big misplay in my opinion. Yeah, that is pretty... I would punish that. <laughs> I would totally punish that. All right, so, uh, you know, if I was me, I would put Sire on the on the bag and just shoot. I mean, he has Lyrio to heal, I guess, but if you Lyrio heal, it means you're not going to be shooting with his Stronger Archers, which is something I'm, I'm sure he's hoping to achieve as well. And this is where the activation advantage really kicks in, you know, um, for Steve to, like, take advantage of the triple shot. I guess round one, you're not really expecting that anyway. It's only round two going forward. And interestingly enough, um, Steve's going first round two, so maybe that was his choice. Okay, so it looks like he's going to be influencing the Raiders of Styre, probably inconsequential this round, and now I'm really curious what he does with the horse. He's actually maneuvering. Hmm... Now, this better be a significant move, because what do you hope to achieve with this horse that you could not achieve with a regular maneuver? Because you're always going to stay outside of the range of the archers, so why take this move when you can take a shot instead? You know what I mean? Like, you're never going to be pushing too deeply into the archers because you don't want to get shot, so why take this move? I wonder if either player realizes you can use the tactics board to shoot arrows. Yeah, so like, are you going to be moving further this unit? Are you actually pushing into the archer's teeth this round? Because if you're not, that was a wasted horse. That could have been arrows instead. And Steve's measuring. Oh my gosh, is he within 14? What is going on here? He is. So he's already put himself in range. He's used the horse to put himself in range with the bag and the sword open. Does Bogler not know how Peter Baelish works? <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, very questionable moves. Oh, thank you for the mention, Corno. 
What is going on here? Oh my gosh. Bogger is just feeding this unit into the Archer Teeth. Now, okay, Braun has activated. Sorry, this unit has activated, I guess. So it's only going to be at best one shot, maybe two, if, you know, Bogger doesn't take the um, opposite zone, being the sword or the bag. But still, why even, why even give yourself the option to get shot you know that's not not great not great and yeah steve is three ncus he could take the crown with peter take a shot and get a guaranteed double shot oh my gosh what is going on okay <laughs> okay he's taking taiko into the bag obviously does not okay i mean he could heal off the weakened token but you should definitely want the shot. The sundering shot is probably where it's at. But again, I think I think Steve's missing opportunity here. He should have put Peter onto the crown. Yes, you don't get a zone, but you get a second shot, right? Because Bogger now will definitely take the sword with Val. Um, so yeah, he could have had a double shot for sure. Now Steve is inching closer. Okay, so he's out of range right now. Okay, so he's... Shifting closer just to barely put himself in range. Yeah, but I would have definitely... Yeah, I would have definitely petered onto the crown, used the sword, and that still gives you a second zone to shoot with. Okay, so it looks like um, Steve is going for the shot. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to avoid those icons. Should be seven dice on fours with Sundering because of the money bags. Uh, where is Mance? Mance, we got three hits, looks like. Oh, nope, didn't roll yet, never mind, my bad. Oh, we got a lot of hits, we got four, okay, we got four hits. Uh, Mance is, uh, over here, behind the bog, next to Harma. Yeah, so outside of panic range, too. Yeah, outside of the panic bubble. The morale bubble, I should say, not the panic bubble. Okay, four saves on sixes. Looking for those crazy wildlings. Okay, to be expected, four go down. But don't forget, folks, that uh, Raiders are up to morale seven, meaning that they're more likely to pass than fail. But, of course, a fail is pretty punishing with the uh, plus one wound from Disorganized. So let's see what happens on the panic test here. Now, interestingly, the Sundering didn't make a difference, you know, so this is this is definitely <laughs> revisionist history here, hindsight. But uh, yeah, the, the Sundering didn't matter, and Steve would have been better off taking this crown to take a shot instead. Uh, so it looks like he feels the panic test on seven, but takes uh, two wounds due to disorganized. All right, so prediction here is that Bogler will uh, react with a Val onto the swords to deny the second shot. Um, replace with a maneuver, and really, at this point, like this was such a wasted activation, unfortunately, with Steyr, because you should really just move this unit back. Like, you should move out of range so that Steve doesn't get the triple shot when he goes first round two. So, you know, what a, in my opinion, what a waste of activations. You moved in range to get shot, and now you're moving out of range after getting shot, you know? Should have been totally used instead to shoot arrows into that unit. Yeah, so as predicted, to deny the second shot, Val onto the swords, and like, I'm curious now what he maneuvers. What was his plan? If he moves back, what a waste of two activations. You know, move forward, get shot, move back. Not good. Yeah. Taking the bag prevents the heal. That's true. But two shots has the potential to out-damage the heal that would have happened. Oh my gosh. So he just moved forward. Oh, and you know what? He's moving forward onto the objective. So this is, this is not great play. Players should know that this is a trap the capture objectives round one because now Steve 
can activate one of his NCUs, take the crown, and replace with either a zap or a shot. The shot is probably more reliable because it's almost always going to cause damage on armor 5 units, whereas a lucky panic test can um, negate any damage. But can you imagine, you know, can you imagine one of these NCUs taking the crown, dealing an average of 4 hits here? It's probably going to kill 3 guys, and then your opening activation with Steve is to take a shot, finishing it off, and now you're shrinking that activation, activation disadvantage from 9-7 to 8-7, you know, so... Yeah, I, I don't know why he's moving forward. He's not going first. I mean, I guess he can charge, right? That was a free maneuver. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Oh, man, but if he charges, he's putting himself in potential danger range of fleet men or blood riders. Um, and you know what? Steve has the bag, so this unit actually has four plus armor and plus one to their morale. That plus one morale is negated by the corpse pile, but, um, you know, with six... I guess it's seven attacks hitting on fours. Uh, very, very... Interesting. Yeah, and see, if I was Steve, this move is not important. I would have definitely taken the crown and shot some arrows to reduce a rank off this unit so that when they charge in, you would be taking less damage. Maybe Steve doesn't care. Maybe he's expecting the charge using the Lyrio heal. And again, Steve is capturing the objective. There's no reason to capture this round one. You just want to move up and cover 90% of the objective. Um, and then on your second round activation, cover it because you're just giving your opponent the opportunity to shoot you right now. So, yeah, you, you never cover these round one. Unless you're worried about your opponent charging into you and capturing it, there's no reason to capture it round one. So when I say that, I said you should capture 90% of it, kind of like what Bogler's doing here, right? Bogler, this is, the, in my opinion, the right play. You want to capture most of it, but I guess if you're worried if your opponent's going to charge you, <coughs> that's when you cover the whole thing to make sure that you own <coughs> to make sure that you own it. But that happens so rarely. You know, people are not that aggressive with cavalry <coughs> because then you're going to get swarmed by your opponent typically. A real painful first round. I agree. Lots of oh, lots of questionable moves happening here. Two shots is better than one shot in a heal. I think so. I definitely agree, Rich. Yeah, for sure. Two shots is better than a shot um, and a heal. I think the attacker wins out there. Yeah, I agree. Especially with the potential panic damage, you know. I don't know why they're moving the objectives. They should have locked these. Uh oh. <laughs> if I were them, if they've moved this objective, um, I would just reset the card. Resetting the card resets all the objectives as well. I don't know if it resets the terrain though, so I could be wrong there. Okay. Yeah, but they should have just locked it in. Is the terrain locked in? Oh, it's not. Oh my gosh. I don't think I can interact, can I? Can I? Oh. I can't even write. I can write to them on Discord, I guess. Yeah, they haven't locked the terrain. It happens, you know, when you start gaming. You forget the little, little details. Objectives and terrain. Okay, so yeah, very interesting that Steve is leaving that fifth zone open. I imagine he's saving it for an Illyrio heal. I'm wondering if he doesn't remember that you can use it for the arrows. And it looks like he's going. Okay, hold on here. <clears throat> he's just marching. He's just marching into a counter charge position. Interesting. 
interesting because you know he's giving those raiders the opportunity to charge the flayed men which would really blunt their damage ah uh, yeah i don't know i don't know i mean drogo was never charging this run i guess i guess because of the activation disadvantage these raiders would never charge until everything's activated anyway so it doesn't really matter. Like he was never going to get to counter charge the flayman this round, and as a result, Steve will never get to use Illyrio either, right? Because <clears throat> yeah, he's two activations down, so the raiders can definitely charge in as their ninth activation after he was activated. So yeah, you know, Steve should definitely before those raiders charge, shoot arrows into them to reduce a rank off. Okay, Trapper's moving up. Kind of far forward, if you ask me. They only need to get within long range to use your trapping ability, but they're coming in quite a bit closer. I don't... This is interesting because he's not even moving... Oh, I think he is. He's measuring to be barely within 8 inches, I imagine, so that he can get the shot... <clears throat> the shift into a shot. But not even. Like, this is more than 8. Like, I wonder why. I wonder why. Yes, you're in arrow range. <laughs> those those archers are pretty far forward. You are in arrow range, yes. <clears throat> yeah, those, those Stormcrow archers are in heaven right now. They've got a target-rich environment, a free folk player just running into their arrows. Okay, so it's down to Steve's, I guess, third last activation. He does have two NCUs to activate still. So, uh, I mean, why not pass with Peter? You know, if you're planning on using Lyrio last anyway, why not pass with Peter? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what his cards are. I don't know if he had the right cards to get that charge in. But yes, you know, he definitely should have shot arrows from the tactics board twice, I'd say. Well, no, sorry, once, because the shot was more important. But yeah, he should have taken Peter for the double shot, for sure. So Caldrog was activating, and again, I think this is a misplay, because he has Peter still to pass with. He could have passed with Peter, seen a sniffing activation on um, Boggler's part, and then moved Cal Drogo. Now, is it a big deal? Probably not. At the end of the day, Drogo's positioning himself in a central central position so that he can kind of act anywhere, but technically he doesn't have to activate Drogo yet. He still has Peter to pass with. Drogo is going over the center. Seems pretty far forward. Can I measure things? I cannot measure things. Okay, so I think Steve is trying to stay out of shot range of the trappers. I mean, Steve's first next, right? So hmm. yeah, I guess I guess he's never taking the sword first, right? He's always going to activate Peter and take. I think the envelope to get the free shot. <clears throat> Uh, so you are with an 8, but the angle's bad, because um, the Travers have to shift forward 2 inches, they don't get to measure at an angle like that, so he's probably safe, and honestly, a couple of Travers shots into your front shouldn't be that bad anyway, and you'll recoup those wounds with Fuel by Slaughter anyhow. Yeah, Steve's being very aggressive in this unit, like, very forward, you know, like, you definitely should be getting all the Alpha Strikes as the Targaryen player. And he's just... Oh, he's coming within Warcry range, that's why. But still a bit too close, if you ask me. Like, it's enough to just Warcry the Trappers or the Raiders, but he wants to Warcry a more important unit. And he's getting really deep. He's coming within 11 inches. Like, why so close? You know, I always assume my opponents have a plan, right? So Steve has a reason for this. Let's not come within 12. Let's come within 11. There's got to be a reason for this, right? I mean, 11 technically is their maximum charge range, I suppose, so it's safe. But, you know, Freefork have so many ways to get extra movement out that 
it's not really that safe. <clears throat> okay, so back to Bogler. Um, he's got these three activations here, plus the activation from the Raiders charging into the Stormcrows, I imagine. That charge is not going to do a lot of damage, then he's going to be countered hard by something else. But again, this unit really should have been close to dead at this point, between the arrows and a double shot. <clears throat> Okay, so this is the Harma. No, this is Naked Raiders of the Raid Leader, sorry. Raid Leader Raiders, so not naked at all. Uh, are reacting to this. So yeah, Steve's got a lot of pressure from the left, and it looks like Boggers are reacting to that. Okay, so just kind of shifting towards the left a little bit. It does put him outside of automatic charge range. A march forward would have put him in automatic charge range. So I don't know if a maneuver was the best move. Now he could be setting some sort of corner trap in where if he charges one unit, he'll always get flanked by another. But you don't want to send more units in a Drogo. You're not likely to kill him, in my opinion. You just want to tie him up and have units free to gang up on other things. I don't think two units... Now, mind you, I say that, but this unit is... Nope, never mind, that's Trappers. Harma's over here. I mean, I don't think Harma's enough, even with Styre, to bring down Drogo, but we will see. Okay, so back to Steve. Steve's got his NCUs now. He's probably just realizing, oh right, I had Peter this entire time, I could have passed with. At this point, there's no reason to delay Right? All his significant activations have, have already occurred. He should just, uh, you know, throw down arrows, I'd say, is the more reliable bet. Probably onto this unit of Raiders here. Is there anything else worth shooting? No, he only shoot this. Anything worth zapping? Not really. Mance is influencing these three units. <clears throat> now, interestingly, a zap will kill an average of three guys if you feel panic. Um, but again, yeah, because you might spike past panic. Oh, we got a card play here. We got Wilding Diplomacy. Oh, okay, so he won't be... This is not a great use of Wilding Diplomacy, though. Wilding Diplomacy is such an important card to deny an important activation on the NCU board. To deny, you know, a couple of arrow shots is not a big deal. In my opinion, Bogger should have used it on round three when Steve was... Actually, he should use it going, round, going first in round two. Oh, and what's really brutal, too, about this use is that he can activate Peter, play Wilding Diplomacy, pass with Peter, and still do what he wants to do with Illyrio. Ah, yeah, that is really bad use of one of the most powerful cards in um, the Freefolk deck. Yeah, that was... That, ugh, oof. Like, that card should have been used round two. Uh, let me just think here. Round two is significant, because there's so many ways for Steve to shoot with the tactics board through the sword or the um, bag or through the envelope with Peter. So maybe maybe it doesn't matter, but still, not a great use in my opinion because it doesn't prevent much this round. And you know what? If you use it round two to say you can't use the... Um, sword or the bag for example and you make him use the envelope with peter it still forced him off zones that you might want to take yourself right so it still has an impact it has very little impact here in my opinion i'm sure mickey is dying inside right here yeah yeah yeah, yeah. assault orders oh there might be yeah, oh, I never thought about that. Good point, Rich. I forgot about Assault Orders. Yeah. Maybe that's why he went so deep. And if he went so deep because he wanted the Assault Orders charge, Bogger has just helped him by giving him an auto charge with these uh, trappers here, or these raiders here. Okay, so Peter passed, I imagine. And now we got uh, Harma moving up. So Harma is a very key piece. She's movement seven right now with Ygret and Harma's attachment. 
She can march fourteen. She can pivot and march fourteen. I wonder if Bogler would just go deep into the uh, Stormcore mercenaries and try and pick them off, kill an activation, then come back to help support against uh, Drogo. I think it would be a big win for Steve to have this unit sit on objective and just score points. But I don't know. Mickey knows this matchup better than I do. Um, would Harma into the flank with Steyr be enough to take down Drogo? All right, I'm going to blow my nose. Be back. Yeah, again, I feel I feel bad for criticizing their play. Um, so again, they probably have a plan. You know, they probably have a plan as to what what the reasoning for certain moves were. That uh, I don't know. <clears throat> anyway, so we got uh, Harma marching up. She didn't go her full movement. She went onto the bog and is not even going to Drogo's flank, which is very interesting because. If she did, it puts pressure on Steve to not go on the tactics board. You know, if, if Harma was in the flank, Steve now doesn't necessarily shoot with the tactics board. And, you know, with the weakened, he's definitely not going to one-shot Harma's unit. I guess the fear for Harma was if she went too far forward, maybe she gets flanked by Stormcrows, perhaps. But that pulls Stormcrows off an objective as well. Don't know. Okay, so now we got Steve's last activation. Did did Endline, did Rich predict an assault orders correctly? Is that the play? Or will we see some arrows or a crown zap? Oh, okay, there we go. Mickey's saying that yes, Spearwives can definitely take on Drogo in the flank with... Uh, the extra hits and Steyr, etc. <clears throat> and uh, so Jacob's saying, without Warcry, not likely. True. You know, four plus saves and good morale. Yeah. And then you have the whole Tycho Illyrio package to bring back as well. So you have to literally one shot 12 wounds here. You know, I was trying Free Folk out the other day and uh, <laughs> I didn't have enough combo pieces to pull the Wombo combo. And I think I was missing Steyr. I had. Coordination tactics with followers of bone with a bone lord's chosen and yeah the uh, the attack was spreads and pitiful without um, the sun ring from Steyr. Okay, so here comes Illyrio, Illyrio onto the crown. Obviously, there's no heals. The question is zap or arrows. Zap or arrows. Oh, never mind. It was Assault Orders. Wow, Rich saw the future. And this unit of raiders moved up to give an, you know. But the question is, is that smart? Now, I guess, <clears throat> I guess he's going first. And, you know, if he charges into the front, it's possible that Mance can't countercharge. But again, Mance probably wouldn't want to countercharge for fear of getting killed. And yeah, you know, while they're resolving this, it's interesting that Mance did not choose to go in a corner node, so that scoring will be slowed down a little bit, to instead provide a better morale bubble for his army. It's actually very interesting now that I'm looking at the board a little more, because Steve, with less activations, is going to be controlling potentially three objectives, <laughs> with his four units controlling three objectives, whereas the free foot player with six trays Right now, is only controlling one objective. But again, that's actually the right play. You don't want to be controlling it with this corner unit in fear of arrow shots. Okay, here comes Assault Orders. Baited out the Wild Diplomacy. One down, one to go. Um, oh, so he took a hit from... Okay, he took a hit from the uh, traps. Took a wound. Irrelevant. He's going to take that wound back in a second anyway. <coughs> And I imagine he's going to the rear. Now, if I was Steve, would I do an automatic wound or I try and kill the raid leader? Oh, I think 
Did Steve war cry? Steve did not war cry before taking the crown either, which is a misplay. And he's also playing a card. He's playing fire and blood for some extra abilities. He does not have the horse. He can choose reroll charges. I can't measure range, but I imagine Drogo's automatically in. He's going to take either Vicious or Sundering. I'd probably go with Vicious for the extra panic damage, obviously. Ooh, I shouldn't say obviously. It's going to be at minus two, so testing on seven. Ugh. Seven. You know, if I was me, I would assume my opponent's going to pass since Mance is right here. So I might go for the Sundering. Sundering for the guaranteed damage, quote unquote guaranteed damage, versus the uh, Leadership 7 test. But again, yeah, you know, another little misplay, I think, because Steve did not use Warcry at the start of Valyria's activation. <clears throat> if he knew he was going to uh, Assault Orders in, there's no reason not to. And that would just push through more damage and give him potential to take the sword's first round two and just kill off the unit that he's attacking. Lots of discussion happening here. Is, is Steve wondering what you can charge? No. He's going for the obvious one in the front. Okay, did he roll the charge? Looks like he did. No disorderly. And interesting, he's putting himself here. I don't know if this is smart. Because is he trying to avoid getting charged by this unit? He actually is for sure. See, if I was Steve, and I would have checked. Maybe he already checked and I didn't see it. If he went flush, would Mance even be in his flank? For sure, Mance is now in the flank. And he's trying to put himself further away, but the distance from corner to corner is actually not that far, if you look at, if you ask me. And this could be a flank. Anyway. Oh, he's going for the kill on the raid leader, which works. Um, so the reason why I was asking whether or not that'd be a smart play or not is because the auto kill is guaranteed damage, which means that when you go for the swords next round and get another auto kill, like you've taken off two guys, so you only have to kill ten guys with your double set of attacks. Whereas if you fail the expert duelist, um, you know you got to chew through more wounds essentially. Right? So it might have been better to go with the auto kill. I mean, he killed him anyways; so it didn't matter. But instead of rolling dice, get the two auto wounds to only have to kill ten guys with your two sets of attacks. Two sets of attacks being this attack plus swords next round. But yeah, you know, I think he's given himself an opportunity to get flanked by Mance here. And I wonder if he had checked to see if going flush would have prevented that. You should at least check, you know. It may have been flanked either way, but you should at least check. I didn't see the check. <clears throat> All right, how about your regular attacks now? Regular attacks. Seven attacks on threes. Oh, he's... Okay, he's letting him go back for the war cry. That's very gentlemanly of him. And he passes. Yeah, he's letting him go back for the war cry. He realized he've got war cry, I imagine, and is going back now. Okay, because the war cry is up. Okay. Average roll for the first roll, rerolling for the charge, and then the second reroll potentially for weaken. Okay, you got six hits, and does he use the weaken? Might as well. Yep. Six hits becomes. Oh, powerful weaken there. Only three hits now. Three hits. So I'm wondering if you took Vicious or Sundering. We'll see. With the Vulnerable Token, I guess with the Vulnerable Token... Okay, so with the Panic Token, Vicious is the smart play. So he probably took Vicious. Setting on in case, of, you know, Sundering would have made no difference there anyway, which is convenient for Steve. Three guys go down. 
<clears throat> and I imagine it's a vicious panic test, especially with the war with the panic token. You're likely to pass, likely to have them fail now, and take an extra three wounds out of it. All right, let's find out. So morale five because of Mance's bubble, but vicious because of fire and blood, probably. Now, if he doesn't fail the vicious test, it kind of emphasizes my earlier point that you know, blood riders really don't hit that hard. I mean, there was a weakened token there, I guess, so it shouldn't be too disparaging. Okay, panic. Oopsies. Is that the roll? Oh. That might have been the roll. Kind of a funny roll. Uh, and he's taking max damage. Four wounds out of that. Yeah, very one-shottable now <clears throat> with the first activation. Steve should be healing a wound from Fueled by Slaughter. And I wonder if we're going to have any Diversion Tactics card play here. Ooh, yeah, so... Oh, okay, you know what? Um, that does make sense. Uh, I don't know if Steve checked that or not, but by charging on the side, like that 50-50, he uh, avoids Harmon's Arc of Sight. So we'll see if there's a Diversion Tactics in here that lets him... He's pivoting. I imagine that means he's got Diversion Tactics. We saw Walling Diplomacy... Yeah, this feels good like diversion tactics, but he didn't pull the card out yet. Oh yes, Sentinel. My bad. Thank you for pointing that out. Just Sentinel. Who needs diversion tactics when you got Sentinel? In fact, I guess you probably can't even play them at the same time, right? I forgot about the Sentinel ability. Thank you for the correction there. Okay, Sentinel sitting with the flank charge. Now I wonder how far he moved, because wouldn't he want the full wombo combo of like shift shot charge? Because they can move seven. I don't know if that was seven or not. That felt like less than seven. Right? You do like a hard pivot, move seven forward. Unless he's going for a flank charge now with Mance. All right, anywho, it's all Boggler now. So Boggler is down to these unit of Raiders have been depleted, and he's down to Mance himself. What will he do? You know, those Flaytner Blood Riders are really deep in, meaning they're going to, you know, take all the modifiers from There's Too Many and get all the tokens from um, Stranded Exposed, it could be bad. It could be bad for them. And I don't think Steve healed that wound due to fueled by slaughter. He should have healed a wound. I'm sure they'll correct that later on. Okay, what does Bogler do? It's got raiders and trappers left. So it looks like he's looking at the charge. Steve has two cards in hand. He's already played... So he's played... Oh, he's got one card in hand. He had Fire and Blood and Assault Orders, right? He's already played one Assault Orders as well. I think that was worth. If he gets to finish off a unit and then Overrun... Oh, man, that card's Overrun. That'd be nasty. If that card is Overrun, that would be nasty. All right, charging in with the Raiders. Not disorderly. Okay, so because of Assault Orders, I do take it back. You know, it was probably better not to take the shot. This is worth it if you can pop the unit round two, serve round two. And this is where, you know, incomplete info, I guess. I can only make a decision based on what I can see. But yeah, that, that charge was totally worth to cripple this unit, 
finish him off, and oh man, if that's over, and that'll be the uh, the dream combo of cards there, into you know the flank or whatever. Okay, so in come the raiders. Six attacks, seven attacks of star with sundering, and you know what? Even though they have uh, plus one morale, there is a course problem nearby, so we'll be testing on their basic morale of seven. Now he's debating how to align. Um, does it matter? I would probably align flush. Yes, this is a game for the Great Canadian Open. Yeah. Same trigger. Yeah, this is our third game. We've had already two games go by. Uh, the first game was between um, Wape from, I think, Sweden versus Mitch. Um, Mitch, I didn't watch the game, but Mitch apparently had a, a, a strong lead. Um, and then uh, the game kind of fell apart and came to a very close end. And the uh, second game was played last night between Gamma, Gordy from Maritimes versus Chris Tran. And it looks like Gordy managed to pull the win against one of the top ranked players in the world. Pretty cool. All right, so we got. Oopsies, probably got the dice here. Seven days hitting on fours or re rolls. They are weakened. That's probably a misclick. Oh, is he forgetting Star's Influence? It looks like he is. He should be in one extra... Oh, he lost a rank, my bad. Yeah, he lost a rank, so it's six dice, my bad. Uh, but they all hit pretty good. They should not be weakened as far as I know. So we're looking at six saves on fives. Fives because of Brawn with his... What's it called? Improve Armaments? Loyalty through Coin. All right, six saves on fives. Pretty good roll, 50-50 there. Uh, so this is three, and then panicking on seven, minus one, plus one, from loyalty through coin and the course file. Testing on seven, any tricks, any trickery? No trickery, in fact, I don't think Targaryens have any trickery cards for morale there. <coughs> Harrow, nice pass, nice pass. So yeah, that charge just did not do much. And I wonder if they grabbed the objective by accident because they don't see it here. <laughs> I think they, move. oh, it's buried. I can hover over it and see it. So the objective is back here. Something happened when they charged and it like vanished. Okay, anything left? I think we just got Mance left. We got Mance left and what will Mance do? Mance could get a flank, but I guess it's now not good to take a flank, because then you rob Harma of the flank. Yeah, so you should probably not charge Mance in A, because it also means your commander might get killed. But B, it uh, will prevent Harma from getting that. Oh, he's going He's going for it? No, he's not. He's just, uh, look, he's just positioning. Yeah, it looks like it would have been 8, maybe 9 inch charge, so 50-50. Oh, no, those are trappers. You're moving 6, right? Yeah. So it looks like it would have been a... Oh, he is going for it. I think that's an 8. That could be a 2+, plus, but not a good charge. Not a good charge, I don't think. You don't have a lot of hitting power with trappers. And you're stopping hard... Oh, he's, yeah, he's just maneuvering to get closer and provide a morale bubble. And maybe some shots. He might be setting up some shots for the future. Probably just some extra chip damage from shots. It would be hilarious, though if that last card is overrun, or if Steve draws into overrun, plays the sword, kills his unit off, and then overruns into Mance. That would be devastating. Man, if he overrun is in his opening hand or the next two cards. we got the long plan going down, I imagine. So it's end of the round. Uh, he's going to look for one card. I wonder what card he's going to choose. Um, obvious choices here are Endless Horde. 
Steve's going first, so having your offense cards probably doesn't matter. I imagine he's going for Endless Horde. Maybe Wilding Diplomacy, actually. Ooh, that could be a good play. Taking Wilding Diplomacy to prevent the swords. Now, hold on. <clears throat> Would I, as a Targaryen player, not even take swords? Because you don't have any weak solos. You might just take the hit. That would be very interesting, though, if he takes the hit on Stormcore Mercenaries, and that actually puts them in killable range of these raiders. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder, what did he choose? Predictions. That is true. That is true. Yeah, exactly. Like, if you don't charge, if you don't tie him up, the Surge will put him out of range anyway. Yeah, the overrun's pretty bad. What do you think he chose, folks? Endless Horde, Wilding Diplomacy? What do you think? So it's in his hand. What do you think he chose? Okay, that's the end of round one. Very bloody round one, I gotta say. Lots of lots of stuff happened. Okay, round two. Steve is gonna draw two more cards. Will he draw Overrun? Did Bogglers draw Wilding Diplomacy? Alright, let's see what happens with the tactics board here. I imagine going here first. I imagine going now, I mean the safe play for Steve is actually to activate Drogo and just take the kill with his activation if he's worried about Wilding Diplomacy. But again, you may not be worried about it. You might just be like, you know, take the hit. That's going to be a second copy of Diplomacy as well, so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, that is very interesting. Very interesting. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, you probably don't even need to war cry with the vulnerable token already on there as well. You only have to kill three guys with the regular attacks with a vulnerable token. Pretty good odds. Alright. What is Steve doing with his cursor? He's looking at his cards. He's reading. He's reading people. What does that mean? Is that an overrun? <laughs> is that an overrun? Overrun would be so brutal. Overrun would be pretty brutal. Oh man, o sword into overrun into like a regular Drogo activation can just kill those trappers. <clears throat> Which is interesting because, I mean, not only do you kill the commander and it kills significant unit, it would even up the active. Well, it wouldn't even it up. Those other ra uh, raiders are still alive, I guess. A lot of reading. Implies his cards are important. <clears throat> okay, we see a Peter. Now, interesting. Hey, is that Van Van? How's it going, Van Van? Peter, oh, he's doing the super... Okay, so yeah, I was going to say Peter can take the bag to deny any healing. Take the sword. Kill off those raiders. Oh my gosh. All right, here we go. So, Peter onto bag, probably taking the sword to deny healing. This means that this unit of raiders is also blow upable. Um, I'm assuming he's attacking with Drogo. Going to get a free kill. And he did heal that wound, by the way, with few by slaughter, so he remembered. And we should be throwing seven dice. Yep. So one kill, seven dice, no rerolls. Oh, okay, he's got four hits. Again, he only has to kill three guys because of Expert Duelist. So with the Vulnerable Token, very, very likely. But that was a bit of a subpar roll. So with some hot dice, he could he could survive. Which would be huge. Huge to avoid the counter charge. But really, you're expecting him to die here, and what I really want to know is, I want to know about the overrun. 
All right, we got dead. They should be dead with the expert duelist. So expert, much wow. Seems to be some sort of debate going on here, some sort of chatting. They should just be dead, folks. Yeah. All right. Okay, now, the moment of truth. Is there an overrun? Ha! You fell into my trap card. Looks like no. Looks like there's no overrun. Sadness. Oh, I, want, I wanted violence. I wanted to see violence. Okay, so the um, surge. Now, Steve's too close. This positioning is too close. He needs to fix that. Um, positioning is going to put him outside of... Ah, but the thing is, it doesn't actually save him Harma, right? Because Harma has Sentinel. And this positioning is too close. It's got us an inch away. Yeah, because Sentinel from Harma can let her still move uh, five because of the bog. Yeah, this positioning is too close. It doesn't change too much, but it's technically illegal. Yeah, the five inch Sentinel order. Oh, I wonder. I wonder if. This is. Oh, he's going to cycle, probably? Uh, or he actually might use the top part. I often use it to cycle, but plus one hit on Flamen is pretty nasty. Often I misuse this card, too. For some reason, I always use this card as Drogo's activation, but it can be used off any attack. And Drogo has lots of attacks. Oh, hold on here. I've never used it on archers before. Is it only for melee? That's yeah, melee. But is he using it for the morale bubble? He's also going to use it within long range. I don't think they're within long range. What is going on here? Okay, so they were here, right? I don't think they... Oh, he was measuring! Never mind. I lied, I lied. Yeah, yeah, he measured. I did see that measure, and I was wondering why was he measuring that. Now it makes sense. He's trying to prevent them from dying due to morale. That's very interesting use of that card. I've never seen him use that one before. He's using it strictly for defense. For defense. Pretty cool. All right. Respect. That's legit. Legit play. And he's reconsidering the maneuver now, the search. Unless he, like, slow rolls the overrun. But yeah, that was an illegal position anyway, so maybe he's just fixing the one-inch gap. <laughs> this is a new set. said. <laughs> I definitely understand Mickey's feeling. You know, often when I watch games, I'm like wringing my hands like, why aren't you doing this move? Do this instead. Get out of the way. Let me roll your dice for you. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely had have had those feelings. All right, so... Oh, okay, so I understand now. They want to pop Sentinel, which is done before the Surge, which is worse for the Free Flow player since now Drogo can react to the Surge, obviously. Um, again, I don't know how far he moved there. And he should also realize that he won't get the ideal scenario since Drogo can uh, can surge away safely. And Drogo's not even activated yet, and the sword is still open. Yeah, so I think, yeah, because he knew he's giving up the sword, a Stire-powered attack could have killed these guys in the failed panic. So this is a pretty smart play for defense. Just playing very safe. Okay, so the spirit is moving with an eight for the shift and shoot. Now, I don't know if he realizes the bog is going to reduce his shift. So he actually needs to go within seven. That'll be sadness if uh, if Steve stops him from shifting too. Ah, both of them using tray. It's true. It's hard to tell what's going on. <laughs> The Targaryens only have four trays. That's all you have to remember. They have four trays. Once you identify those trays, you're you're okay. Yeah, I uh, don't know if he realizes that Bog reduces the shift by an inch. And if Steve stops him from shifting and shooting and preventing the um, set, what's it called the shoot into charge. Oh, I know this. When I play Bastard Girls, I use it all the time. It's 
called, oh my gosh, Brain Fart. <clears throat> Charging Assault? No. Now I'm frustrated. I have to look it up. You're probably typing in the chat right now. All you brainiacs. Whoa! What is happening here? How is it charging? Am I crazy? Are you just checking to see what would it be like? <clears throat> charging volley. Isn't that what it's called? Charging volley? I want to say charging volley. Uh, Bastard Girls. It's called Charging Volley. All right. Not bad. Okay, so I don't know how we go to charge in here, if this is actually a charge. Oh, I'm dumb. I am super dumb. It's Sentinel, right? Because the Sentinel order happens... Yes. Did they roll? I guess they rolled. It's the Sentinel order. Yeah, Sentinel order is not just a maneuver. It's also a charge. Derp. Okay, so he got a Sentinel charge in. Uh, it was through the bogs, no rerolls. But if you look at the extra hits... So we got three, and then that should be six hits in the flank. See, that is very dangerous because you're not going to do crippling damage. And Drogo still has... I guess it's a free charge, right? Free charge into a flank with the swords could be really bad, actually. Thank goodness there's Tycho. Boy, did he re-roll? Did he re-roll? Five plus three is eight. Man, I am off my game right now. Did I miss something? I see five here. Why is he rolling? That is eight. Okay, cool. Eight saves. I think he re-rolled accidentally. Did I get something wrong there, folks? Yeah, I think he rerolled by accident there. Charging volley, yeah. I forgot the name. Uh, looks like four fails. Five fails, sorry. Five fails, and that is a f pass on the panic. Uh, plus one, minus one for the tree cancels out, and Drogo gives another plus one. That is a pass, plus it'd be zero damage anyway because of the minus one for Iron Resolve. So that was five wounds. You know what's also five wounds? A Tycho heal. So that damage can all be negated. Now, this is technically killable. It is now Boggler's turn. You know, a Stire with swords into the flank with some good rolls could kill this unit. Especially if you see some card play with, like, um, Surrounded and Exposed um, could kill that unit. So if I was Steve, I wouldn't mess around and I would just pop Tycho down. Oh my gosh, is he not popping Tycho? Okay, but he also didn't play any cards. So I'm guessing there's no Surround and Exposed. Man, that is playing with fire. He's going over here. I guess without Surround and Exposed, he's not confident pushing through the damage. Because what, Spheroes are six attacks hitting on fours. It'd be seven attacks hitting on fours to take off seven wounds. Man, oh man, that is, that is tight. That is tight. Is he going onto the Raiders? Looks like he is. Six stacks. Okay, six stacks. Uh, wow. That's ah, pretty good. Well, I shouldn't say wow. Four hits. He does have the bags. He's been very careful to control the bags uh, first two rounds to get all the bonuses for Brawn. So he's still saving on fives. Four saves on fives. Won't kill them, especially with the plus two panic roll from Drogo. So three guys go down. Um, this unit has been whittled, but unfortunately, Flame into the flank will finish them. And they'll be fine again. But you know what? With three guys, six guys, after the Flame and charge, I would be tempted as the free folk player to shoot arrows and finish that unit off. Yeah, I mean, if you know what? <laughs> this could be a brilliant play in hindsight. What if this unit's job was only to whittle them down and make them killable to arrows? Wouldn't that be funny? <clears throat> okay, so panic. We're at plus two overall. And that's a pass. Oh my gosh, look at that 
foresight. The whoa, did you fail? It should be plus three loyalty through coin Drogo's card minus one, so it should be plus two. Plus two should be a pass. He's taking the one wound. I guess it doesn't matter. It won't drop him a rank, but I think that's a pass. Right? Plus two, plus one for loyalty through the coin. Should be a pass. All right, so <clears throat> that was the free foot player onto the swords. I wonder if um, Steve. I mean, pops Tycho first of all. Or if he doesn't pop Tycho, does he just swing the Flavin in and finish them off? But again, <clears throat> that'll be very interesting. If Steve doesn't pivot off the objective, he leaves himself open for a double volley of Archer Fire from the walls. Steve's got two cards in hand because he played. Yeah, so he's realizing he didn't fail the panic. You know, I gotta say, like, when you're observing a game, it's easier to, like, catch all these little things. <clears throat> Definitely when you're in the game, you know, you get sucked into what you're thinking, and you don't always catch all the details. Even as an observer, I'm, I'm missing details. You know, I'm missing the send order twice now from Harma, so I really gotta... You can tell I play for you very little. <laughs> I don't often play against Harma. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to use them as well, because the, the word is they're good, pretty good, climbing that stats ranking. My first game, <clears throat> I narrowly lost to my buddy Endline, but it was like, wow, my first game and came super close. So definitely see the potential behind these wild and savages. <clears throat> <clears throat> so it's Steve's turn. I mean, I think he should pop Tycho. And I think you should charge Flamin in just to kill the... Ah! It's interesting, you know, maybe they realize what I'm realizing, is that arrows will kill those archers, because if, right now, this is contested. Right? This is contested, so he won't get shot. I wonder. I mean, what's a better target for these Flamin? Does he flank into Harma? I mean, that's not a bad play either, honestly. It does remove one of the big teeth from the free folk range. Oh, he does pop Tycho. He heals three on the Stormcrow Archers and two off Drogo. Interesting split there. <coughs> not, not, not wrong, I don't think. But interestingly, by putting him up to more ranks, he does let himself get shot by arrows again, since he now controls the objective. Yeah, Drogo does not need a full heal because all his attacks will get heals anyway. So that makes a lot of sense to not give Drogo the full heal. He's pretty safe, especially with Lirio downstream as well to heal three. But you never know, you know, when you're surrounded, right? It's always a bit risky. Now I wonder if Mance can see this unit and get another flank in, you know, because this unit could be tag team by two flanks. Now the Flamen are here, they can prevent something, so we will see. <clears throat> uh, we see a roll. I believe that's probably Warcry. And with the tree, it's actually going to work. Iron Resolve doesn't help you with the Warcry. But the tree is here, so that should be okay. Do you see tokens going down? I do not see tokens down going yet. But that should have been a pass due to the tree. Not due to Iron Resolve. Okay, Warcry has not gone down yet, I don't think. Is he still thinking? There's a panic on Harma, but I don't believe there should be. 
I don't recall a panic going down. Where's Steve's cursor? <clears throat> oh, he's going on to here. Interesting. I mean, that's interesting because, what is this? Adrovat. Oh, Drogo's activating or is he going to cycle? That's actually pretty clever use. I would probably use it for the first ability. This unit is likely to die. It has no heals left. I mean, there is um, regroup and reform, I suppose. But even with four wounds from these trappers, a flank charge of all these modifiers could kill them anyway. So I imagine Drogo's going to do some damage to Harma, maybe even kill Harma, which I would. I would try in this case, because she's too viable of a piece to keep alive. <clears throat> and then Flayman into the flank um, probably kills this for a, a point. So that would be pretty brutal, getting a point off an insignificant unit. But if things swing badly, he actually loses a point. So slight risk. Yeah, he's leaving the card on the table, which implies that it's used for the top part, for the crit blow and bonus point. And it looks like he's going to be swinging onto Harma. So he did separate a dice. Why three dice? Why three dice? Why would he roll three dice? Is this the Harma dice? If it's the Harma dice, Harma lives. Why would he roll three dice separately? Might have been a misclick. Might have been a misclick. Yeah, yeah, that was probably a misclick. We got seven dice now hitting on threes, no rerolls. Uh, four hits. Again, pretty mediocre. Blood Riders just don't have a lot of damage output. And if you fail that expert duelist, it's real feels bad. Because <clears throat> they're going to make, you know, one or two saves here, and then you killed, what, one or two guys? Like, no big deal, you know? Blood Riders do not have a lot of punch. You gotta pick the targets very, very carefully. Yeah, he only killed two. He's probably gonna pass the panic with Mance in the tree nearby, so blood, the mighty Blood Riders will deal a massive, massive two wounds only. Unlikely to cause much more. Okay, we got the panic. Easy pass there with a hard 12. Nicely done. Yeah. Underlining my earlier point. Blood Riders do not kill a lot of dudes. Typically. Typically. Without some card play, typically not that likely. Or repeated attacks, right? Repeated attacks. And, of course, that's also because he threw the war cry somewhere else. Oh, he's rerolling with panic. Yeah, I don't know where the panic token came from. Because I feel like round one, he put the panic onto the raiders. And I'm pretty sure Boggler had the envelope. So I don't know where the panic comes from. Five is a pass. Mance and a tree is a pass. I mean, Mance alone is a pass. You don't even need the tree. <clears throat> okay, so that was his activation. So now, what do you do as a free player? You know that this unit is being marked for death. You can't really retreat because you're going to get shot. And you can't retreat in a position where you can't get charged, I don't think. Yeah, you can't retreat in a position where you can't get charged. He's got the one heal from Drogo there from Fuel by Slaughter. Remember this time, that's good. Yeah, what do you do to save the lives? Maybe you do nothing. Oh, you know what you probably do? You probably, if you were so inclined, you attack these flayed men with your trappers. You deny them the charge bonus, and you stop them from getting to the flank. That would be a huge deal. Because then you're relying on the melee attacks of these archers to kill off these raiders. That would be huge. Yeah, if I was Free Folk, I would probably try and charge these trappers into these blade men. And then you might actually gain a point from Adravat. If this unit survives, the melee attacks from Stormcar Archers. And they can only attack once. You know, both zones are taken. 
So you only attack once. I think Steve made the right play of grabbing the bags to deny the heal. And he could have gone super greedy, taking the envelope and use the swords and left bags and swords open for extra attacks from Braun. Braun can melee attack as well with <clears throat> uh, motivated by coin. But I think denying the heal is probably the right play. All right, what we got here? We got a field control. Oh, no. The feels bad card of the Targaryen deck. So looks like he was trying to... Oh, the real question is, did he try and play Endless Horde? It doesn't seem like it. No cards were pulled out. Now I wonder, what was the one... Oh, no, yeah, yeah. He had three and he drew one. Yes, so Boggler's reading the card. I wonder if he's never played against field control before, because that card is a kick in the in the nuts if you don't expect it. And yeah, I wonder if he... I wonder if Steve asked him if he wants to play a card. And will we see Endless Horde get countered? Probably not. Order of Activations implies that uh, Endless Horde was not played. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. He's got his hand on a card. What does that mean? Did he mean to play field uh, in the sword? Uh oh. Sadness. Uh, doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. So now he has to. Uh, yeah. He's got to like retroactively say I was going to use regret. He does get regret's influence at least. But something's going to become weakened. Something is going to become weakened. What would I choose? I would just choose these trappers, honestly. But yeah, I think he missed an opportunity here. I think instead of taking the horse, a priority would have been just to charge into these raiders to prevent the bonus point from Madravad. Yeah, sorry, charge these trappers into the flayed men to prevent the flayed men from flanking the raiders and getting the point from Madravad. So now he's got to weaken something and maybe shift it. I would probably just... Uh, you know what? If you think you're going to lose these raiders, I would just weaken these raiders. Just influencing Mance to maybe get a flank charge in. That kind of makes sense. <clears throat> Extra movement for the flank charge. And then what does he weaken? Yeah, if you're going to lose these tra raiders, you might as well weaken them, I say. Okay, just checking the distance here. Three, four, five, six, seven. He was within seven inches, which meant that he was automatically in, right? Because he how has a movement of seven now with those raiders or with those trappers. Tell me he didn't weaken this unit. Like you didn't need that shift, unless he's trying to get a shot. But the shift shot would have worked anyway if you can draw line of sight. It's a bit dicey to me if you can draw line of sight or not. But if he shifted, he needs to also put a weaken token on from field control. All right, we got Sren exposed for some extra tokens. We're just going to lay it down. Now, this could just be set up for a bigger charge. A bigger charge. But yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I was going to say a bigger charge coming up from these uh, trackers into the flank with maybe coordinated assault using coordination tactics, but you don't have Styre. Without Styre in the Sundering, you're not going to do a lot of damage to these guys. And they have a lot of wounds now. They have 10 wounds on them, right? But Tycho hasn't popped. If he waits till after the Lyrio heal, I don't know. Very close. And I, I don't see a weaken. What is the timing on Sron Exposed? Start of any turn. Okay, so I'm presuming he meant to play at the start of his turn, probably. Maybe start of. Yeah, start of his turn, probably. Okay, 
Steve's down to no cards. No cards. Oh, yes. He played Adravat, uh, lead by example, and he played um, Field Control. So he's out of cards. Envelope is open. Envelope is open. So it's, I believe, okay, what just happened here? Oh, yeah. He took Field Control, so now it's Steve's turn. So Steve is considering NCUs or activations on the board. Yeah, you might just take the cards, I'd say. Oh, actually, no. If you take the cards, you don't get the Delirio heal, right? So do you heal now? Actually, a heal on Drogo would also put a weaken onto these Spearwives. That might be useful. A heal here would guarantee that these guys do zero damage, pretty much. Keeps your Stormcrows alive, too. You know what? I would probably heal Drogo. Drogo can't attack anymore. So he's just going to be taking straight damage from going forward. <clears throat> yeah, I would probably heal Drogo. Heal onto the envelope with Illyrio would be what I do. What will Steve do? Steve may have taken a pause. Nope, oh, never mind. His hand's moving. Where's Bogler? Bogler is looking at a card. Okay, for anyone joining the stream, it is round two. We are kind of just starting the round. Um, no arrows have been fired yet from the uh, from the tactics board, but I think every zone more or less has been pretty important. Yeah, it's been double sword attacks, so they're pretty relevant. Steve is to play. It's uh, he just field controlled Ygret. Yeah, they didn't put a weakened token onto that unit that shifted, so that's an, that's an error here. This unit should be weakened, which will reduce their already, you know, low uh, act attacks. He's rolling a single dice for a charge, probably Flavin into the flank to guarantee the kill on those six raiders. They're obviously in the flank, so no need to measure. You know what, I also didn't realize that putting him within six also lets him play... Uh, counter strategy, but <clears throat> Steve's out of cards and he already war cried, so nothing to counter strategy, in my opinion. Okay, so Flayed Men should easily be able to thwomp six raiders in the flank with double token on them. So this should be a formality here, and that's going to grant him a valuable point for holding, uh, for, for Andrabat as well. <clears throat> I gotta say, Steve's gotten some pretty good value out of his cards. You know, I almost never use lead by example for the top part. I almost always cycle. So pretty good value there. I'd about the same way. I almost always cycle it. So very impressed with uh, with his card play here. Okay, yeah, that is nine hits in the flank. <laughs> I mean, you should always roll dice. You should always roll dice. You never know what might happen, but... Uh, He needs uh, sixes. <laughs> a lot of sixes. No, they're dead. Dead and a... Oh, sorry. Did not roll yet. My bad. That was a lot of sixes, but it was not enough. He needed more than three out of nine. <laughs> okay, so those guys are dead. And that's a point for Steve. And he's also closing that activation gap. Closing the activation gap. I think actually it's even now, isn't it? Yes, it is even. Very scary position for the free folk when you are even on activations. And they resurrected the objective, and Steve's now going to consider going on top of it, which is actually very intelligent because even though the trappers can easily contest, it means that there's less pressure on Drogo. The only way you kill Drogo is with repeated attacks, like repeated again and again and again. So by putting him on the objective, it will force Bogler to consider charging them and taking pressure off Drogo. But yeah, I think Bogler should have not taken the horse and charged in. <clears throat> now, arguably, that just delays inevitable. Maybe charging the Flamen, you know, just lets them slaughter the trappers instead, who would be outside of Mance's range. I don't know. It's tough. Okay, so that was pretty good activation there. 
And it's particularly painful because that was not activated yet, too. So he literally lost an activation on the board. <clears throat> okay, back to Boggler. So Boggler's options are... Uh, Spear is in the flank. I would probably just pile into Drogo. He's got 10 wounds left. He can't. Oh, he's got an Illyrio heal. But I would just pile into Drogo. Yeah, I would just pile into him. And if you have overwhelming assaults, you know, you might get some sick bonuses with the uh, Spear Wives. But yeah, I would probably just pile into Drogo. He's got 13 wounds essentially because of the Illyrio heal. And what does he have left? He has Val for another maneuver. Um, oh, that, that could be used to retreat the Spear Wives and charge back in. That'd be really good, actually. Yeah, if you pile in the... Tr oh, Archers. Yes, yes. There's this thing called Archers. Yes, yes. One shot. No big deal. Yeah, so as Boggler, what do you do? You're going to get shot. I mean, I think you still do it. Is he trying to charge? So he does move six, <clears throat> but the angle's bad, right? Because he's right now going straight forward. He'd have to pivot, and he'd have to pivot through the flame, and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I, as the free foot player, I would feel a bit desperate at this point, and I would probably just go for a Hail Mary pylon to Drogo. Hmm. They both chose red. They're sadists. I guess technically this... Nope, never mind. I was going to say this might be pink, but it looks like it's equally red. I guess I've been watching since the beginning, so I've had a pretty good grasp of who's who. But uh, yeah, the sad news is it's now even trays. Um, it's four Targaryen trays versus the four Free Folk trays. Yeah, he's managed to kill off two of the trays via an assault orders into a swords, and via a, um, a shot from the storm crows into a flank from the flayed men. So he's even up the activation count. He's doing a good combination of like holding objectives and killing things, and the free foot player unfortunately feels like he's just kind of reacting. You know, he's kind of like, at this point, he's only got desperate plays left. So I think he's debating what to do here. I would probably just pile in a drug over myself. Looks like he's going for it. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that was one. All right, we got a charge. Pro pile in a drogo, pray for the best. And hope that you have an overwhelming assault in your hand so that these spear wives can get max bonuses. Yeah, you're hoping for another charge from Mance, another charge from another attack from the spear wives, and just pray. And you are going first next, you know what I mean? So you might be able to kill Drogo, and that might put you back in the game. Like, if Death doesn't kill Drogo, then it's game over. You know, you've committed too many resources, and uh, he's holding the objectives. He's going to be scoring three points. It's going to be 4-1, unless you kill Drogo. Okay, I don't even know their attack profile. I've never seen these attack in combat this edition. So five attacks on fives, not great. No cards. You don't use cards now. You probably use cards at the end. <clears throat> okay, decent start. Hopefully gets another hit or two in. You just gotta change the target. Okay, three hits. It's about average on five dice. Three hits on fours. And I would probably save these tokens for a much bigger hit coming in from probably the spear wives. <clears throat> Ooh, three wounds! Huge! That's going to pretty much counter the Lyrio heal. Huge! Okay, panic at even. Sorry, panic at plus one, actually. The flank is countered by the Weirwood, and Drogo gives plus one because of Iron Resolve. So plus one to Drogo. 
plus one and minus one damage because of Iron Resolve. Plus one to Drogo. Drogo! Easy pass. Okay. Interesting. So now, Drogo has seven wounds left. So what I'm predicting might happen is Illyrio heal. Oh, he's making him reroll? Mm, he needs to roll a four. I mean, the odds are never great. He's making him reroll. I mean, he did roll a two. You know, that is chance. He's, he need, it's a one in six chance. Not great. Not great. He's making him reroll all of it. That was not the right play. Well, let's just think here. If you reroll the four, it's a one in six chance, right? Of rolling a one. Versus what are the odds of actually rolling three? It's worse, right? The only way to roll three is there's three combinations out of 36, one in 12. Yeah, no, he should have re-rolled just the four. Didn't matter. Either way, he would have passed. Okay, so what's left? Archers and NCUs and Stormcrows. So Illyrio heal. Illyrio heal. Okay, if that happens, which is what I'm predicting, he should charge in with these raiders, or trappers, flee with the Spearwives to get a counter charge, uh, to charge back in with uh, coordinated assaults. Yeah. Oh, but the problem is he has to do it now. He has to do it now because if he doesn't, Tycho takes the crown instead. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. Well, you gotta take the zone now. I don't think there's a useful maneuver to be done, unfortunately. Oh, there is! You can retreat. Oh, but they're influencing here. I was going to say you can retreat backwards and maybe get a rear charge. I would do it. I would roll and just try for it. The other option is take the crown and go for some arrow shots onto Storm Archers probably. But I would gamble and just create a roll high and try to get behind Drogo for the rear charge. That would be pretty huge. You can't give up that zone, bro. Do not give up that crown. Val that crown. Roll for that flea. Try and get behind Drogo. You gotta make some desperate, desperate plays here. Is he going for the charge? Oh no! Oh, he's going for a maneuver probably with Val. Like you're, I mean. To be fair, I don't know what the angle's like, and I don't know if he could have actually seen Drogo from that angle. He might be just going for the safe, safe for sure flank with Val. And again, if he couldn't see, then this is the right play. But I would have loved to see a spicy rear flee into a rear charge. And yeah, he won't take any penalties of Ugret, so this makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> yeah, I would have I would have liked to check. It would have been close, but he may have oh man. He he's moving pretty far. Okay, so that is that is eight. Eight is enough, right? Because he's got uh six plus one for your grit is seven, so eight is automatically in. <clears throat> oh, but he's oh okay, that's smart. I think he's measuring for the shift shoot charge. Oh no, this is not spear wise. These are trappers. Never mind. To track what I said. I wonder if he went within 12 of these guys to uh, try and trap those guys when they activate. Uh, I guess it's not really when they activate, it's when they do an action, right? So they may choose to do no action, which is fine. Alright, so does Steve punish him by taking the crown and zapping something that's not your Mance? Now where is Mance? Mance is here, so you would zap... Oh, you know what? You could zap these trappers into a shot, and that would cripple them also. And that is that is his activation advantage is slipping away if he eats a crown zap into a flank shot. <clears throat> now, man, there is a fifth zone here, folks. There is a fifth zone. Do you see this fifth zone? There is no pressure to activate these archers. He's just checking the objective, maybe? <laughs> Crossing fingers? What is happening? Are they shooting the flank here? Crown zone. Just saying. I 
I feel like he shifted. But maybe he was just checking the objective. <clears throat> That'd be really sad if he did take a shot and that gave Steve the opportunity, or gave Bogger the opportunity to retreat with Val into a flank charge into Drogo. Oh, they are weakened. Okay, you know what? They're probably not going to die because of the weakened. The Lyrio heal put a weakened on the Spearwives, so that will probably keep Drogo alive. Even with the flank charge. Because, well, you're getting guaranteed hits, right? If you expect, let's say, five hits after rerolls, getting two or three hits, three, six, yeah, probably not enough damage. Nope. So here's some dice. Yeah, it looks like this is an arrow shot. Okay, now, what zones do he have? He does not have the sword, so that is a pitiful one hit. One hit, and the Sundering does not matter. Oh, they are vulnerable because of the uh, envelope, but one kill won't do much. Okay, so one kill. Panic at minus one. Oh my gosh, he took a shot. There's a zone here, folks. That zone. He's also shooting into combat, so a panic test will be taken on the Blood Riders. So minus one, I don't think they're near the tree. Minus one is a pass, big pass, big pass. Okay, that would have been a lot of damage. Okay, Drogo. Now Drogo's testing on a four, so he's got a one in 12 chance of failing. <clears throat> Steve should be rolling some panic dice here. But again, it's easy to miss these little deets. Easy to miss these little deets. Okay. Val onto the crown. Doing the retreat on Harma, I bet. Yeah, that was a missed opportunity. And they also forgot to activate the uh, the uh, archers. <clears throat> now, what will he maneuver? He should retreat and just get the coordinated assault bonus. And Drogo's tied up. It's now or never. I wonder what three cards he's holding. Like, overwhelming assault would be a pretty big deal. Okay, so that was that. Now it's over to Steve. Steve has only dead activations left. Stormcrow Mercs and Tycho. So it doesn't even matter what Steve does, right? Okay, so yeah. Hmm. Okay, he's passing with Tycho. Yeah, none of these activations really matter. And now we're going to see some, some violence. Let's see some violence, folks. The big hit should come from Harma. So if I was Steve, I would, so if I was Bogler, I would save any cards I have for Harma's unit. So he should charge in Mance, in my opinion, and then charge in Harma. If he has overwhelming assault. That is contingent on having overwhelming assault. Now he has, he's only drawn six cards, so odds aren't fantastic, I guess. Okay, so what's he got left to do? Nope. Oh, he's doing the shot into the charge. Okay, cool. Oh, sadness. Zero hits in the shot, so no reason at all to use the weaken. Unfortunate. Okay, rolling for the charge, I bet. Okay, at least he didn't disorderly. And now, do we see a card? I mean, I guess this is a tell, right? If he's charging with Harmer first, it probably means you don't have coordinate, uh, overwhelming assault. And I guess if he used the panic token earlier, it's probably a sign he does not have there's too many, or otherwise he would have saved it for when he's got, like, the third attack. All right. Do not pull out Overwhelming Assault. <laughs> I mean, I guess he doesn't need many bonuses, right? What do you get, Crit Blow and Sundering? Because he does need rerolls. I guess he only needs two. Okay. Yeah, I guess it's true. He, he Yeah, you know what, my bad. He doesn't need the third unit because he already gets rerolls. 
So yeah, he only needs he only needs two units. He's getting max benefit anyway. Um, Cripplo and uh, yeah, you know what? I wonder now if it would have been better to use it on the trappers just because it's weakened token. The weakened token will pretty much negate any Cripplos you generate. So I wonder in hindsight if you just fish for sixes with the trappers instead. Okay, six dice on fours. Oh, is there a raid leader? There is not. So six dice on fours. Sadness. Average roll. To be expected. Okay, reroll for the charge. Oh, not good. Not good. Will there be justice? Will he get three hits after the weakened token? Will there be justice? That was definite sadness there. Not terrible. Could have been worse. Okay, so only five hits because of Coronation Assault and Spearwives. Five hits with Sundering is saving on fives. <clears throat> and no crit blows. Yeah. Yeah, it might have been better to save it. Might have been better to save it. That weakened token was pretty big. Oh, Illyrio. So good. Five saves on fives. If he's lucky, he'll fail a bunch of them and save the vulnerable for the trappers. Uh, man, what would I do? I would probably save it. I would take the three damage. I would just take the three damage and save it for the trappers. Did you take three wounds? I feel like you took two. I feel like you took two wounds there. It should have been three. Oh, he had 10 before, right? He should have 7 now. He has 7 now, it's correct. This is correct. I miscounted. Okay, panic at good. That is not enough. Okay, Steve's last dead activation. And then we see the last resort charge from Mance. Mance the, Mance the boss. Who knows, maybe he's got the second over on the assault. That'd be hilarious. Okay, activate and pass with Storm Crows. Yep. All right. All right. Will the king beyond the wall drag down Kal Drogo? So he's just going to readjust his position a little bit. I would probably push forward. No, he just sat. Okay. Okay, so he's just doing these dead activations now. So he's just going to... Yeah, I think the train is still 3D. Yeah, it's still 3D. I almost want to click it for them, but I want to really not interact with the game at all if I can. I already messaged them in Discord as well, so if they were paying attention, they should be able to see it. In fact, I should probably pay attention to Discord too in case they've been asking me questions. They have not. So, hilariously, my friend Rich uh, played his game, I think, at 9 o'clock, and I think they're done. <laughs> They got done in an hour. Now, Rich is playing Lannisters into neutrals, and Rich is endline. He's a very, very experienced player. Uh, I would say he's like Candace Secret Weapon. Like he's the like one of our best players, I would say, that no one knows about. Um, and he played in neutrals. Neutrals are obviously very tough. So I'm just going to check real fast. How did Rich do? And it looks like... Oh. I don't see the results. Let me refresh. What's going on here? Panic test? What is this? Are they doing arrows? Oh, Mance did not charge in. Mance just passed. So they're just resolving arrows now. Interesting. Mance chose not to charge in. Mm, that was weak. I think I would have charged in. Because you're going first. Yeah, I... I I think you need every attack possible. Tyke was already been popped. I would have charged in Mance. Gone first, attacked with Spearwives into the flank. I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I don't know how much damage it takes. But he's got seven wounds. If you did a couple here, yeah, I don't know. I would have done it. So this resolving arrow shots. That was huge! Five kills from the arrows on the Stormcrow Archers. Huge! And this is what I'm talking about. If turn one, they have been shooting each other, like, completely different game, you know, but they did not. Uh, 
All right, let's see here. Oh, yep, yeah, never mind. They got finished, and uh, yeah. Oh, it looks like uh, looks like Rich wiped him out. Literally killed everything. Dang. You're a bad man, Rich. You're a bad man. And uh, yeah, just taking some shots. This was significant. You know, I would consider shooting more arrows into these guys, maybe. If you're not going to attack with the swords, arrows could just kill them, you know? <laughs> Wouldn't that be sick? You take the you take the bag, take some shots. Yeah, that would be really sick. That would be huge. I mean, it's looking bad. You should have scored one point. It should be 4-1. It's looking bad. You're losing the activation advantage. And you're just losing wounds. So to kill these guys off a lucky shot from the castle walls would be pretty significant. Okay, so they've drawn new cards. They should be drawing new cards. Bogler should be drawing two more cards. Here we go. Yeah, so I think you take arrow shots. You take the bag and take arrow shots. There's no point in attacking. If you weren't going to commit to the attack last round, you should not follow up with a sword anymore. There's too many wounds on this unit to kill. I mean, you could kill them, but why not double down and get the extra attacks from Mance? Legitimately, legitimately, Mance's charge with five attacks hitting on fives should have maybe done an extra wound or two. And that puts them in killable range with the mans or with the star sword in the flank. So if you're gonna do it then, you might as well just take arrow shots now, I'd say. <clears throat> it's looking really bad though, because like a rear charge here with a war cry can easily pop all eleven of these um, trappers. And then if Steve just sits, he'll get another at least two points. I expect this unit to die from arrow shots this this round, right? There's only a, a Lirio. If Bogger goes for the bag, I wouldn't use Val, though. What's he planning here? I would have taken a shot. Personally, I would have taken a shot. This unit is so tasty. Four guys, you can just kill them with the arrow shots. He rolls bad and saves and just die. Is he going for a maneuver? This is Bogler checking distance. Why would he check this? Is he planning a retreat into some sort of weird flank charge? I mean, you don't want to fight Drogo anymore. Oh, he is going to retreat. And he's retreating onto the bog. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I would have shot them, personally. I would have shot them. I mean, are you trying to keep harm alive from the attack? You know, it's... I would have shot them. All right, back to Steve. Steve's got the sword open too. Yeah, he's just he can start you know mulching the trappers, healing back Drogo, and then and the Drogo will be unkilled. Once he takes a sword, if he takes a sword, oh, we got a card coming up. Ooh, another Adjuat, but I think he's using it for the cycle. He's probably fishing for assault workers. Yes, going for the cycle. Good play. Um, it's not hard to do, but a lot of Targaryen players, when they run Drogo, forget to cycle at the start of their turn. Those cards don't always have a lot of value. I gotta, again, give Steve big props. Okay, so Steve is taking the horse? Wow, okay, interesting. I would have just blended those trappers, personally. Oh, he's doing some field control on himself? He is. 
He's retreating with plus one movement. This is not often used, I have to say. You off, you don't often feel control yourself. It's so much, especially against free folk when they have endless horde. It's so much better as a screw you card. Though a lot of free folk players know they have feel control and they don't take the horse. So I wonder what he's going to retreat with. I mean, the obvious choice is Drogo. Right? Get Drogo out of there. I would probably retreat forwards, actually, to get away from the Spearwives. So he gets to go 11 inches. It's a lot. He can go into... Yeah, 11 is going to take him really far out. And put himself in a position to attack those trappers, or to attack Nance. Or the Spearwives, even. Lots of choices, really. I imagine he's going forward. And he is. Okay. Okay, so what do you do now in Bogger's position? <clears throat> Bogger, you shoot arrows. That's what you do. You shoot arrows, you take the sword, so he doesn't shoot you in case the arrow is the archer survive. Um, also, these guys get a pivot. Interestingly, this pivot could be used to charge those archers. Um, he rolled some dice. Oh, traps. Right, got it. Wow, took a wound off Drogo. Pretty cool. Oh, but hold on here. I don't think you get traps, because you only get against unengaged units, correct? Yeah, I don't think you should have gotten traps. That looks incorrect to me. Yeah, if you're Boggler... I would consider and measure a front charge into the Stormcrow Archers after you pivot. And if you don't like that, I would shoot them full of arrows. I would take Styre onto the sword, or maybe Ygret. Yeah, Ygret, Ygret probably safer. Ygret onto the sword, shoot them full of arrows. And instead, he is activating Harma. Now, she does not get a Sentinel Order this round, right? Oh, well, she's positioning to Sentinel into the counter charge, I guess. He's measuring six, but I hope he knows that range comes from the center. you just pre-measuring. <clears throat> so as a free foot player, what do you do? Again, I think you take the sword with the Ygret and just shoot the Stormcrow Arch Archers. But unfortunately, it's a losing battle. Even if you kill them, you get a point. You might hold this objective in the middle. That's going to be... I mean, he should have a point also. This isn't move. This should be up one. That could put him up to four. But he's going to be at 6 with the corner objectives, at least. And he kills us at 7. So it's looking not so good. He needs to make some really big plays to get back in the game. I think it might be... It could be 7-4, but Steve could close the game out end of 4 just by sitting on objectives.
Yeah, so, you know, Baru's thinking. He's in a tough spot, so don't blame him thinking here. What is he considering here? He's considering moving? He pivoted. No, he did not pivot. He's considering attacking the Flademen. Too far, sir. That is too far. And you're in their front. You cannot charge them. Hmm. What other, what other things could he do? Um, he's already committed Val to... Yeah, see? Val gives you such cool late... Or, like, late tactic support activation opportunities to reposition your units. But he committed Val early for the retreat. And the retreat has not even paid off, right? Because his guys can't even see. Okay, you grant onto the swords. What he... Oh, he flipped around. Did he flip around these trappers? No, they did not. He's doing shots. Yes! Yes! Oh! Wait, hold on. Who rolled? They both rolled. <laughs> and it is it is unclear who's supposed to roll, uh, but I generally let my opponent roll because they're attacking me. So is this going to be five hits? Oh, it's going to be five hits! Oh, this is going to be spicy! Five hits. That's too many dice, sir. Five hits only. Five hits on fives. Will he get a kill on these Stormcrow Archers? He's got to roll a little above average, I'd say. This is too many dice, though. I believe it should be five. I believe those arrows. Whoa-oh. He's going to hit the roll button. Should be five shots. Guess he's pass. What's happening? I mean, they're going to live. But, I mean, technically, that's wrong. <laughs> technically, that's wrong. Oh man, that should be a reroll. And it's unfortunate because it's a good roll. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, that was too many dice, but it was a good roll. Unfortunately, by the book, they should reroll that. By the book, they should reroll that. <laughs> Am I crazy? It should be D3 plus 2, right? Yeah, D3 plus 2. Alrighty. Well, we'll let the players play. But if I was Steve, I'd feel pretty salty. Because <laughs> rolling three sixes is pretty good. Oh, interestingly, Boggles with the bag as well, so they have a worse save. <clears throat> so Steve's now measuring to see if he can shoot. He's out of range of Harma. He can only get a shot. And he realizes he, sh he wants to take a shot before they die. So he wants to take their activation. Um, he could Illyrio heal, but then he's not Illyrio healing Drogo. And even with Illyrio heal, another shot from Styre and the walls will kill him anyway. So probably the wrong place. So I, I do think this is the right play. You should take the shot because you can't save that unit. And it's more worth it to save Drogo. So yeah, Steve will probably lose those Stormcrow Archers one way or the other, but he'll probably pop those trappers. Um, he will hold two objectives, and I imagine Bog will hold two. So he should be at four. It should be 7-4 end of this round. Unless we got some cool cards happening. And we do. Blood the Dragon. Never mind. That's just the boring old revenge card. Oh, but what a time to play it before the archers die. Who would you put it on? Plus one attack. The funny thing is, as much as I like putting on Drogo for max damage, he doesn't really need it because his profile does not degrade too much. Whereas Flademan with an extra attack, like that attack could be a crit blow attack. You know what I'm saying? So... Yeah, I mean, that's not wrong. And if you're worried about panic killing Drogo through some bad luck, it will reduce those odds of happening as well. Oh. 
Okay, so that was Boggle's turn. So now it's Steve's turn. So Steve has all his combat activations and two MCUs left. Um, yeah, I would just take the shot. Take the shot before they die, bro. Take the shot before they die. And he is. He controls no zones. This is an unaugmented shot. Now, another thing to consider is this maneuvering off the objective, which he did. So he's shifting off and getting a shot. So he won't get killed. Very cool. Very smart. You know what's funny, though, is that maybe Star then goes for the crown play. Crown zap into a minus two test would probably kill them as well. Yeah, yeah, I would definitely crown zap that after this shot. So what, four shots probably? I think they have a 754 profile. 764, oh, pretty good. 764 profile. But no bonuses, no bonuses. Now maybe he didn't ship, maybe he maneuvered. Why is this shot taking so long otherwise? I think he maneuvered, but it may not save him because, uh, what? What? Oh, did he play swift reposition? Did he play swift reposition? I don't see it here. Five, six, seven, eight. There's one card I've not accounted for. Did he play Swift Reposition? 11. There's five cards here. Five, six, seven, eight for Blood of the Dragon, plus 11. There's one card I don't see. What card? He may have repositioned off. Nope, it's the shot. Okay, so no, I saw him pick up Peter, which is why I got confused. Uh, so two hits. Sixes. He's re-rolling. Oh, he's controlling the sword zone. Uh, I guess he might as well. There's no... Like, it's not great just for re-rolls on such low dice. But honestly, where else is he going to use Peter? Like, when else does he need the, the horse? You know what I mean? The horse is the only other zone that matters. Okay, that was that was pretty good. Four, four, four wounds. And now... He's not in range of mance for sure, and he's probably out of range of the trees, so minus one for the panic. This could be pretty big. I mean, at the end of the day, they're going to die. Minus one is a pass. I always forget. I know raiders went up to seven. Are trappers still at eight? They are, but that's a pass. Nicely done. Won't matter. Flame in the butt is still going to kill them. All right, so that was the shot. Star onto crown. Do we see a star onto the crown? Minus two, no bags. Into a kill onto the Stormcrow Archers. He's thinking about his options. Not many good options, unfortunately. Yeah. I would just crown zap those guys before he steals it from you, bro. debating <clears throat> really debating something now I want to solve the mystery of the missing card he's got five cards in his discard here as far as I can tell five two cards here is seven blood of the dragon meets eight but he's got 11 cards in his deck so I feel like there's a missing card somewhere hmm I thought it was field control, but it's no. Oh, here it is. Nope. Don't know. I really don't know. There may be a card doubled up here somewhere, but I only count 19 cards. They're charging. What? Charging Drogo? 
why. I don't know. What is to be gained out of this? Why not crown zap? <clears throat> Steve better grow the crown zap after this. <sighs> yeah, so just hitting on fives with not a lot of dice, no bonuses. What's the benefit? I mean, you don't even really tie them up. Okay, we got two hits, three plus saves in the front. One wound, panic at plus one. I mean, you just don't have the volume of attacks you need to kill Drogo, so I don't know what this game's Plus one. Oh, fail. Oh my god. Oh my god. Plus one's a fail. Two wounds taken. Drogo is down to just himself. Wow. Yeah, man. If he had done repeated attacks, a man's charge into a sword. But that's hindsight. You know, you can't expect him to fail. You don't expect him to fail, really. Unless you draw freaking, you know, uh, there's too many, then expect them to fail. And that's why that panic token expenditure was kind of questionable early, when you didn't have those bonuses. All right, so. If I was Steve, I would throw uh, Illyrio probably onto the crown and replace with the heel. Um, yeah. What else? He's considering a charge, but the charge is not a priority because they've already activated. They can't attack again. Yeah. I would I would just heal, personally. Illyrio into a heal. I mean you could rear charge, but there's no rush. In fact the rear charge could be bad, because you might have diversion tactics. <laughs> diversion tactics would be really bad. Your diversion tactics spear wives into Drogo's flank and just kill him. Oh my gosh, that'd be a big misplay. He's going for the charge into the rear. He's panicking, I'd say, a little bit. No Warcry popped yet either. Uh, he's rolling two dice for some reason. Oh, that's probably the uh, Warcry. Oh, what? What just happened? Was it arrows? I'm confused. Was that arrows? Oh, traps. It was traps. Got it. Okay. Traps onto the flayed men. Yeah, I think the earlier traps from Nance onto Drogo is not legal because they're engaged. Okay, so anyway, flayed men into the butt with a vulnerable token should equal exploded trappers. I would I would love to see a diversion tactics into a charge from the Spearwives. That would be huge into Drogo. Before Drogo just gets a chance to heal. <clears throat> I wonder if Bog was like rubbing his hands like, oh yes, yes, kill me, yes, attack me, yes, yes. Okay, pretty average roll. Six hits so far. <clears throat> yeah, they don't seem to like to use the built-in rolling functions here. They their hand roll things. Oh, not so good. Only six hits. Six hits should still be dead with the minus 
five panic tests that's going to follow up. In fact, I don't even know how this works. Like, minus five is technically auto fail. I don't think box card auto passes, right? So they should just be dead. I mean, it, I think it's moot anyway. He needs to roll box cards. But I think this is auto fail at minus five because of intimidating presence, right? Rear vicious intimidating presence minus five. They're testing on eight. So even 12 becomes seven. No, so it should be auto dead. But they're rolling for formality, not box cars, so it doesn't matter. All right, do we see a diversion tactics? Do we see a diversion tactics? That's the big question. Diversion tactics could kill Drogo. Diversion tactics could kill Drogo. Oh, he's got a card. He's got a card in hand. Okay, but he's surging. Oops. Diversion tactics. Okay. I think, you know what? I'm being pretty silly here because he doesn't even need diversion tactics, right? He had Sentinel Order. I keep on feeling the Sentinel Order. He had Sentinel Order anyway. So the question now is, if he's using Diversion Tactics instead of Sentinel, does it mean he's going to move something else? He should really use Harma, right? Harma for all the bonuses. And just get right in Drogo's face. Get right in Drogo's face. Oh, it's tricky because Drogo... Oh, Drogo only gets a pivot. Drogo only gets a pivot. He does not get a maneuver because the Flavin did the kill. Oh, I wonder if he had Overrun. If he had Overrun, then he has to play first, right? So he's, he's his first player, yeah. So Overrun won't matter in this case because he would have had to play it first. Okay. Is that all he did with Diversion Tactics? Like a little, little shimmy? You need to be aggressive, bro. You get right in his face. You gotta move that full, like, six into his face. No, seven into his face. Yeah. All the way, dude. All the way. All the way. Seven. Drogo cannot... Oh, you know what, though? I wonder if he's worried about a strange pivot that might prevent him from charging. I don't think it's possible, though. I don't think he can avoid getting charged here. Okay, so he's going for the full wombo combo shot into a charge. We'll see. So Drogo's going to pivot. Yeah, he's just going to take it in the front. With a vulnerable token, he should be dead. With a vulnerable token, he should be dead. And you know what's very interesting? Is that Boggler is not in a position where... Oh, yeah. Yes, so he's going to block the charge. Yes, because I've got the flame men to get a surge. However, however, um, Boggler might be able to shift into the flank and get a shot anyway. And that'll be a that'll be a charge. Now what's interesting is that Boggler is not under pressure to do this right away. He should still take the crown, get the extra steer influence in. Okay, now Steve's guaranteeing it. Yeah, Steve's guaranteeing that he can't do it. Yeah, there's no way now that Bogger gets in the flank. And Bogger's not first. Yeah, that was some good positioning on Steve's part to prevent the flank charge. It makes me wonder why did he play diversion tactics now that I think about it. He should have just he should have just um, used the order. Question mark. Now, what's interesting is that Steve Steve can charge Spear Wives, right? Because he can move into the flank. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, but still, I say the play is Stire onto the crown, kill off those Storm Crows, influence... Who do you influence, though? I was going to say influence Harma, but then Drogo's going to charge her probably to kill her and get some wounds back. Do you charge Mance? Yeah, see, this is where Divinity Attacks would have been better. Right, if if Drogo charges Harma, I mean, 
mans can probably see Drogo anyway, so it won't matter. But like, it might have been better to save. Because I don't see why not just use Sentinel. Why not just use Sentinel? Why use Diversion Tactics when you use Sentinel? Because I'm sure they have the same trigger. When enemy completes an attack, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Boggler's turn. I would Crown Zap with Star, bro. Okay, what is Bogler doing? So Bogler has left his three combat trays and his one NCU. Yeah, so now he's out activated hard. He's going for the Harma? Is he charging because he doesn't want to get countercharged by Drogo? Hmm. Yeah, but. I, oh man, what's with uh, not taking the crown to kill those storm crows? What's up with that? It's going for the charge. Uh, don't you take the shot first? Why not take the shot first? I don't think he took a shot. There's six dice here. Only it's four shots, right? Oh boy. All right, let's see what's going on. What is the plan? Yeah, I don't know why he does not take the crown into Styre. He's got some cards. Does he have the second overwhelming assault, maybe? You get one bonus out of it. Sundering isn't terrible here, I guess. Though Vicious is probably more reliable. We get more damage in. Where is Boggler's hand? Oh, he's tuned the shot first. Okay. Shot into a single hit, sadly. Oh, it rolled into a fail. <laughs> Unlucky. Uh, it's a panic test. You know, every point of damage counts, right? I mean, these are completely... Well, they're not juiced up. They don't have a star. They're not completely juiced up. Panic at even. Panic on six. Panic at even. Is a fail. Extra damage. Not too shabby. For four piddly shots on Flademen. Not too shabby. Unless, is he near the tree? Check it down. I, I mean, he's not on it exactly. It might be within range. That's close. They have to be precise about that. I think he's saying he's in range. Based on the no extra wound. Uh, not a uh, decent start. Three hits. Rerolls into... <sighs> okay, not great. Four hits. Four hits with no modifier. Yeah, the no modifier is rough. Four hits into no modifier. Oh, sorry. Four plus three is seven hits. My bad. Seven hits with no modifier. Seven hits, eight wounds. Let's see what happens. Need some hot dice here. Hot dice for Bogler. <coughs> Ooh. Not terrible. Three fails. So Steve will be down to five wounds and a panic test. And I guess they agreed it's a plus one. There's too many. Uh, only... Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, unfortunate. He had it. I guess he drew into it. Yeah, if he had it earlier, I would have definitely ganged up on Drogo, but I guess he just drew it probably when he refilled his hand. Okay, so it's going to be even on the panic and plus one damage. Uh, so unkillable. Unkillable, unfortunately. He's got five wounds. He can only take four. And he passes. No damage. Would have been four, though. Would have been juicy. 
And now the flank is open. And Drogo's going to heal up at least two wounds out of this, probably. And it won't be enough for Mance to uh, finish him off. I don't think. <clears throat> I mean, it's actually not... You know what? It's possible. If Drogo goes into the flank, heals two by killing off five guys, he'll have five wounds on him. Okay? If this Steyr goes in the crown, kills off these guys, influences Mance, plus one attack and Sundering into the flank with a vulnerable token, with coordinated assault, this card could be coordination tactics, sorry. That could kill Drogo. That could kill Drogo. Wow, they just do not respect this crown. They do not respect this crown. Okay, so he's playing it safe. He's going to heal. Heal where now is the question. I would heal Drogo because these guys cannot get attacked again. He does. That's smart play. Cool. Okay. Stire onto the crown. <laughs> I don't normally do this clapping thing, but <laughs> it's killing me. I would have started so long ago. Stire onto the crown. Dire onto the crowd. What's going on here? Okay, what are his options? His options are his two combat trays or Stire. Okay, Stire on the crown. <clears throat> I imagine it's going to be on the Stormcrow Archers. Oh yeah. Minus two. No bag control this time around for Steve. And yeah, he's putting it onto Mans for the counter charge. Makes sense. Okay. Minus two. Um, testing on nine. Needs a nine. This will be a small victory if he kills it. Dead. Okay, so that's going to put him at two points, because he should have scored one for this objective here. So he should be at two. Unless he's not on the objective or something. No, he's on the objective. He should be at two. Should be at two. I mean, he's putting a point on now. Does he realize he forgot a point when he scored this? He took arrows. I mean, he should get that point. Okay, over to Steve. So Steve has really two relevant... There's no reason to delay at this point. Either you charge Drogo in now. Ah, uh, is there a reason to delay? Hold on, there might be a reason to delay. He can delay with Peter, then he's got to activate these guys. Then, yeah, there is reason to delay. Actually, there is reason to delay. My bad. I just assumed there wasn't, because normally Free Folk <laughs> heavily would activate you. But in this case, yeah, there is reason to delay, because he now activates a Free Folk player. And he can actually wait until Mance is activated before um, Drogo goes in. Now, you know what? It's not... Uh, I don't think he can see. He can see. He can see. I don't think it's impossible that Mance kills these Flayed Men either. <clears throat> I mean, he's moving six. I guess he's moving five through the bog. And I guess he doesn't have Ygret. Never mind. It's very unlikely. If he had Ygret for full rerolls... But you can't have Ygret and a stuck, I guess, right? That's the problem. Okay, so... Uh, so... He now passes the Stormcrows. He's now back to Mance. <laughs> Interestingly, though, he's only scoring one point off objectives. So it should be 6-2 at the end of the round. Still not good for Boggler. Very deep in the hole, points-wise. And losing his activation advantage. Okay, <clears throat> so I think he's trying for the charge. It's a five. Five, no rerolls. Oh, he might not even be able to fit. This is really tight. He may not even be able to fit. And he can't charge Drogo because he couldn't see him. Is he setting up a counter charge for next round? It's very slow. He is very slow. Because at that point, Steve just has to pull back. Pull back, grab the objectives, and he's good. He'll never really catch up. He does not have the mobility to... Uh, well, he does. I shouldn't say that. He has horse and bow to catch up with. 
Yeah, he's just... He's offering mance, actually. You know, he's preventing the flank charge. <clears throat> and he's just offering mance as, uh, as, as, uh, as a blocker. Which isn't the worst. That unit... Actually, it is the worst. If mance dies to expert duelist, then the unit goes back down to morale 8. Scary stuff. Scary stuff. I was going to say they're a good blocker because of their good morale, but if he's not there, if Mance is not there, then not such good morale anymore. <clears throat> so if this game wraps up, half the games for round one would have been finished, which is pretty cool. Four out of eight rounds. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, and, and Drogo's powered up because of the uh, kill in the Storm Crow Archers as well. Okay. So it's Drogo's turn. Does Drogo's go in the front? Probably. I would. Why not? And you're going first next to... How many cards in hand do we have? So he's at two. He's at one. Uh, did he draw two cards from... Well, he's had that for a while. He's had that for a while. I was going to say, did you draw two from Lirio? But Lirio's a wrong place. But he's had that two for a while. I've been counting that. You trying to get into the flank? No, sir. That is not enough distance. Because you got to measure from the flag, right? It's not from the corner. you got to measure from the center point. The center determines where the body of your tray is. So uh, if the center is in the front, then you're doing the front charge. <clears throat> so undisputedly in the front here in this case. Okay, while they're resolving that, let's take a top-down view. Let's just look at it from the top-down. Yeah, it's all... it's all. You know what? It, it, it's kind of cool because um, it looks like it was Steve's plan. When I mentioned the corpse pile from the beginning, um, I mentioned how maybe Steve's plan was to just go deep, and it, he indeed has gone very deep on his opponent. Which I guess is not shocking. View tactics board. Oh, the, the it's such a far view. Uh, let's go right there you. Okay, so the charge is in, into the front. Weaken token shouldn't do too much. I think traps have a six plus save. Yeah, yeah, six plus save. So they still have their crappy stats from one point six. I know that Raiders got a slight buff. I didn't realize trappers had really really bad stats. <clears throat> Yeah. Well, you know what? It's not shocking because the Targaryen player essentially... So many... So I just read the comments. So many open objectives. Even though this is a kind of classic five objective mission, um, Targaryens in general, Khal Drogo and Mother Dragons in particular, play a super aggressive kill you kind of game. And if your opponent is aware of that, then... They react two ways. One way is you say, fine, come come get some. I'm going to still grab the objectives as normal. The other way is you react defensively. And I think... I don't know if Steve reacted... Uh, sorry, if Bogdan reacted defensively. I think he just didn't have time. Like, Steve was just very aggressive and went into him really, really hard. So Warcry goes off from Drogo. Uh, again, they're kind of doing it out of sequence. It should be done at the start of the turn, but no big deal, I suppose. He's playing the second Fire and Blood. Yep. Um, they have six plus saves. Who's got the horse? He has the horse, so he's got all the bonuses. He doesn't need Sundering, so he'll have Vicious and Crit Blow? Vicious and what else? Sorry. Vicious and Reroll. Yeah, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Vicious is all that matters, really, because <laughs> Sundering does matter. Okay, we've got eight, uh, seven dice because he lost a rank. That's right. <clears throat> seven dice because he lost a rank. Lots of fives. Yahtzee. Uh, Reroll for the charge. Grants an extra hit, so six hits with a vulnerable token. I think he failed the Mance kill, because Mance is still here. I didn't see a single dice. He may have just gone for You know what? This is a case where you just go for the kill. Yeah. Yeah, you, you want max damage. I would pop the vulnerable. You want to kill seven guys here, so that when you take the sword, you just have to kill five. And it's a point, because they're not insignificant. I would totally pop the six here. I would totally pop that six. He's making weaken, right. Oh, that is not as pretty. That is only four hits. So four means you maybe kill five. Five 
with the extra duelist leaves seven. Next round, you probably don't kill them. You probably don't kill them. Actually, this is very interesting. This is a case where you probably should have gone for the man's kill. I wonder what he did. Okay, so hold on. He's losing. Okay, he's rerolling for the vulnerable, which I would do. He rolled super high. <laughs> okay, so four dead. I wonder how many takes off. Did he go for the auto kill or the man's kill? Because the man's kill is not only worth it for killing the enemy commander, but it's worth it for the morale penalty. So it looks like he did roll for Mance, and he didn't kill him. Okay. Cool. Panic. Oh, he failed! Oh, wow. Panic on five, no modifier. Or minus two, I guess, but he still failed regardless. Oh, I guess he didn't roll that. Okay, so ten's a pass. Panic token should reroll all of it. Ten is a pass. Panic token should reroll all of it. Which it does. Testing on seven. Minus two for Vicious from Fire and Blood. Yeah, those dice got thrown super high up. It seems spinning. Oh, it's still a pass. This dice is irrelevant because it's still a pass. Pretty big. So that means that when Steve takes the sword, uh, he needs a man's, a man's kill and a panic fail to kill that unit. Now, he did kill a rank. He does heal two wounds. At this point, late in the game, with so few units left, Drogo is now effectively unkillable. Yeah, Drogo will not die at this point. Even with an Endless Horde bringing more units back on, you don't have the hitting power anymore, unfortunately. I don't think you do. I mean, technically you can. Spears are still alive. Coordination Tactics is still a card. Star is still available. Okay, I should, I should write them off. Drogo could die, but it's very, very hard. <clears throat> okay, so that was Drogo. That's the end of the round. We've got some arrows coming down. It's good. This could be very significant. You know, a bad arrow on either unit can really swing the game. I mean, really, Boggler is the one who needs low hits, high saves, and vice versa to um, make it relevant. Yeah, Boggler should be at three. He missed a point when he took arrows the first time. Ooh. Okay, now I'm wondering who is rolling for who. We got five hits. And four hits. Now, are they rolling the right amount of dice? Because those Storm Crows rolled 20 dice last time. Okay, looks like Boggles rolling five. Okay, cool. This is how most people do it. Okay, four fails. That unit's definitely dwindled down to five guys. And Steve's rolling too many. Steve rolling should only be rolling four. He's been rolling plus one each time. It's like he's playing with a handicap. It's like, oh, let you take extra hits on me. It's okay. All right, that was not what... Uh, I mean, it's to be expected, right? They have a better save, so they should be taking less damage. All righty, six to two. But to me, the unless some clutch endless hordes pop out, the game is pretty wrapped up, you know, because Steve is way ahead in points, and it's going to be very hard. I mean, to be fair, his two cab units are not anywhere near objectives anymore, where an easy surge will get back on the objectives. So he won't be scoring a lot himself, but the problem is neither is Boggler, and the game is winding down, right? We're in the bottom half of the game. <clears throat> okay, here we go. we got some uh, sword action here. You want to go for Mance, I'd say. You want the man's kill for the failed panic, which could pop extra wounds. Steve needs to draw new cards, too. Oh, uh, so Geo or Mormon, we are playing with the current rule set. So even though... Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he should definitely run away. And that would just speed the rate of victory. But Steve might be bloodthirsty. Yeah, we're playing uh, current rules. You know, even though I was tempted to play with the new previewed rules, we don't have exact wording, unfortunately. So I don't want to misplay them. Um, so yeah, even though this term is going up for four weeks, um, if the rules drop week three, we're keeping with the same rule set. The only thing we'll adjust is FAQs. If they FAQ any current rules to say, hey, this is how it actually works, or this is what people are doing wrong, we'll do that. But any rules changes will not be in play. So 
So it's kind of like the last 1.7 game before 1.8 or 1.71 drops, I imagine. All right, so uh, Mance got shanked. And we now have eight dice. We should lose a model, yes. Eight dice hitting on threes. This could kill the unit with a panic fail now. And that would be a point. Eight dice on threes. If, yeah, if Stee, if Bogdo does not draw in this horde, he should, it's going to be very hard. Uh, not good roll. Only four hits. Um, he would need max damage to kill them all. He would need them all to fail all those six plus saves and a crit fail panic. Not impossible. Not impossible. Just improbable. And now they can't die. Three wounds, even a max panic fail will uh, keep them alive. But to what end? I mean, at this point, Steve should be shooting arrows. Steve should be, yeah. Like, he, he can just mop up at this point. Yeah, his last two NCUs, I would just shoot arrows in these raiders. Shoot arrows all day, every day. <laughs> but Steve is a pretty bloodlusted player, so he won't run. I, I can see that. I can see that. Are you part of his gaming group? Joe, are you uh, part of the Montreal group? <laughs> cool. Yeah, the goal one day. Uh, okay, so only three dice. Is he taking hits from. Yeah, I think they've been misplaying this. I think he took hits from uh, traps, but traps, I'm sure, is unengaged. Yeah, they've been misplaying these traps. He may him take hits for the, for the attack, but he should not be taking hits. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the goal one day is to make the Great Canadian Open a uh, in real life event, and uh, you know, I'm I'm based in the GTA, so we'll probably do the first couple around here, but. I'm friends with the guys from Capital City Bloodbath, so uh, when they run their next big event and it's safe because of COVID, uh, we'll try and run one in Ottawa, and uh, hopefully we can get some people from um, from Quebec over. And I'm pretty friendly with Gordy from the Maritimes. Uh, who knows? Gordy might make it down too. But yeah, the idea is to slowly build this event up, make it bigger and bigger. And you know, non-Canadians are welcome to come over and play as well. I'm actually really pleased that guys like Chris Tran and uh, Brett Lanfer are taking part, guys like Cyrus are taking part, guys like Wape, very well known on the international scene, are taking part. Um, you know, Gordy just beat Chris Tran, for example. That's a huge feather in his cap, right? To beat the number one rated player in the world. I'm not sure if Chris is still number one rated or not, but he was definitely one or two last time I checked. Anyway, over to Bogler. Bogler has not activated anything as far as you can tell. He's probably thinking about an NCU. Is this the second Blood of the Dragon? It is. <clears throat> what would I do if I was Bogger? I would heal. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you you gotta try and kill those flame men. You gotta kill those flame men to get a chance, I guess. Yeah, that's pretty smart. Star into the horse. Who do you... You know what? You may not even maneuver. You might just influence the uh, spear wives, and you might just shoot arrows into the storm crows. Like, it's not insane. You know, triple volley or double volley to the storm crows could kill them with some good dice. And that pulls you back in. Um, what is he planning on doing, though? So he's influencing... Not sure yet. So what will he do? Yeah, there's nothing significant to maneuver. If anything, he might want to maneuver off the objective <laughs> to not get killed. Yeah, no, Steve's a good guy. Steve's a good guy. I uh, He came over to the GTA once, and uh, we hung out a little bit, had some coffee, and played a game. He's a good dude. Steve is a good dude. Mm 
what are they doing with this, this star activation? Oh, okay, so he's influencing the spear wives. Now the question is, what does he do with the maneuver? I would shoot arrows. Honestly, there's nothing significant to move here. You maybe move these as off the objective to not get shot and killed. Um, nothing needs to retreat because unfortunately, uh, both cab units have not activated yet, so retreat doesn't do anything for you. So I'd say you either shoot the storm crows or you maneuver off the objective. It's tough for Boggler because he's trying to make the best of a tough, of a tough situation. <clears throat> Yeah, he's only got so many resources. He's got to make every resource super impactful. I think he shoot arrows, personally. The nothing... Yeah. He's thinking. Did he retreat and do nothing? No, I mean, that's a mistake, right? He has to shoot arrows. Yeah, he wouldn't... Yeah, you obviously don't retreat and do nothing. You've got to shoot arrows at that. Or you maneuver off the objective. Illyrio just healed. What did this maneuver do? Illyrio just healed. Now that is also a bit of a misplay in my opinion because you can heal with Peter and then Illyrio can heal afterwards also. What happened there? What did this horse activation do? Did he forget about arrows? I think he forgot about arrows. A bit of an experience there with the scenario I think. So... We have some dice being thrown. Oh, okay, so he took the heal, and now the spears are activating. They're weakened. I mean, I, I can see the point of the Lyrio heal is that you're not getting a double heal, but you're putting a weakened token down. He was worried about the weakened. And you know what? This is kind of like flip healing. So I'm okay with this. Yes, this 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 makes this does make sense. I should give Steve some more credit here. I'm super greedy. And I want the 6 wound heal, I guess. Oh my gosh, this weakened is going to be so punishing. Give him four hits. Give him some hope. Give him four hits at least. Oh, uh, three hits? Oh, that's so cruel. Three hits. Three hits, eight wounds. Not good. Not good. Sunring made a difference, though. Sunring made a difference. Killed three. Kind of negated the... Uh... So, you know, in a very real way, you can consider that Illyrio kind of healed five wounds there, right? The seven hits... <clears throat> would have probably... Okay, so the, I'm saying the other four hits would have probably done two more fails, technically. So he kind of did a five-wound heal there with that weakened token. So, you know, that was that was actually pretty good. Again, I'm just super greedy. I would have taken Tycho and then uh, and then healed with uh, Illyrio on top of that. Okay, so that was Panic. Um, I'm imagining it's going to be a pass if he's not yet rolled. He may have rolled already. <laughs> and it's going back to Steve. Yeah, at this point, he just needs to, like, grab the objectives and run away with it. So I think he passed Panic, because they're not making a Panic Dust. He maybe he rolled this right here. And what will he do? Okay, on to... The... Okay, now, does he need more cards? I would say just shoot arrows. Honestly, like, just shoot arrows. And give him less options, give him less choices. You could Crown Zap. Crown Zap would probably... Okay, Crown Zap probably does more if you fail, right? At minus one, they take three wounds. Whereas four shots, you probably overall take less wounds. But you got to fail the panic test, and you could spike cards. Oh, he just went straight up for the cards. Never mind. He went straight up for the cards. He went straight up for cards, and he put a token on... I think it might have been these guys, because they're weakened. I guess he's worried about some sort of charge here, which is kind of funny. He's not worried about the combats over here. He's not worried about weakening Mance, which is true. Hitting on fives. Sorry, Mance's... The unit formerly known as Mance's unit. Um, okay. So over to... Uh, Boggler. Boggler has two NCUs that don't do much in this scenario, and he should really be shooting arrows. He should really be shooting arrows. Uh, 
I treat it to take the hits and heal. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really have healing options. And you know what's really sad is that it looks like he did not draw Endless Horde. He's down to the bottom half of his deck, and he did not draw Endless Horde. Let's try to expose, open the salt. He drew a lot of good cards. When did he use coordination tactics? I feel like I didn't see tactics come out. Okay, so is I mean I'm, I'm being picky here. Okay, I guess I guess Val doesn't matter, right? So you might as well influence, I guess. Arrows, baby. Yeah, and I think that Styre move should have been arrows too. I don't know what Styre did there. So four shot, three shots. Yeah, three shots. Is Steve gonna roll four? No, he rolled three. Only one. Not good. Not good. Okay. So now it's back to Steve. Steve has all his combat trays still. Does he have pressure? He should just finish off these trappers here, right? Before they attack, kill them off. That'll get him a four wound heal, which will bring him back to full health. So round five should probably be the last one of the game. Steve will score one for seven. He's going to run over here, kill this for eight, and then last round, kill this and get the objective for ten. So it should be over round five. At this point, it's a slow strangulation. You know, it's it's hard, very, very hard. Without that endless horde, yeah. Okay, we got eight dice coming down. The auto kill. Not great rolling, but he doesn't... Ah, it's actually an okay rolling. This is a bit under par, but not, not horrible. Five saves on sixes. This should be enough, especially the auto kill from Expert Duelist. And they're dead. So we got a four wound heal on Drago. Officially invincible. And if I was Steve, what would I do? I guess, to be honest, you just go behind, right? You go six forward, you can rear charge these guys, hopefully get the kill, and then jump on the middle objective for plus two. So Steve is at seven. I mean, with a lucky roll, he might just kill these guys with Flaveman anyway. No, Flaveman losing it lost a lot of attacks. They only have five now, or four, I should say, right? Because Blow the Dragon's not up. Oh, is he rolling overrun? Oh, he is savage. This could be GG. This could be GG if he kills them and is able to unstoppable advance onto the middle. He's not even healing. <laughs> he's not even healing. He's got, he knows he's got it, so he's not even healing. Oh man, is he going? That's just overrun. Okay. Yeah, overrun. He's going for the Harma kill. Harma kill! Dead. And then eight attacks. Oh, and they've got Warcry as well. They are probably dead. They are probably dead. Right, eight attacks should kill close to eight guys. And then it comes down to the panic. And it's actually e minus one for Intimidating Presence. And plus one wound. Because of the Blade Men. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be minus one on the morale set. They should be dead. And really, at this point, Bogger has so few resources, it's very hard to come back. Very hard slash near impossible. Uh, it's impossible at this point. There's no way he climbs a 10 before Steve climbs a 10. But he's fighting to the bitter end. Respect. Respect. Yeah, for sure. Overrun's gonna seal the deal. I gotta say, it's good timing. You know, often I try overrun my opening hand. It's like great, opening hand overrun. But uh, yeah, overrun right now is super clutch. And yeah, this should this should pop the unit sixes with rerolls from vulnerable plus panic at minus one. They should be dead. With a panic token, of course. Uh, that's six. There's two guys left. He doesn't even need the reroll, really, because um, the panic test should kill them regardless. Because they're taking plus one wound. <clears throat> Did he roll six again? <laughs> yes! You, you give it to him, Boggler. You defy him. That's right. 
Okay, so minus one on the panic because of intimidating presence. The uh, flank is canceled by the weirwood. So minus one overall. Testing on an eight. Oh, they pass! Intimidating presence, or panic token, I should say. Make them just reroll the six. One in six chance. Panic token is a one in six chance to survive this. What? What? Are they eight base? Oh, they're seven. Yeah, I think they miscounted that. I could be crazy, but right. There's seven. Flank, tree, cancel out, and then minus one because of the presence means only. Only minus one. Should have been a pass. I mean, his odds of passing are one in six, 16%, 0.6. So maybe they're just, you know, wrapping up at this point. Um, he does not have Unstoppable Advance, it seems like. Unstoppable Advance would be a guaranteed game over. But yeah, they, they, they can call it at this point. <laughs> These guys will just... March into the middle, score one. Oh, it's game over. It's already game over, right? Because Stormcrows and Flademan will score two, so that's game. It'll be, it should be 10-4, uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, it's more than five points, so it's going to be a... Uh, what's the word? Um, crushing victory either way for Steve. Yeah, you know, so Steve was very aggressive. I mean, he had the hand for it. He had the Assault Orders. Um yeah, I feel like Boggler just pushed up a little too close onto... I mean, I don't think he got really punished either. He he, he got onto objectives unnecessarily. Wasn't really punished for it, but maybe getting too close to Steve and getting charged was a problem. Getting too close into Archer Ranger was a problem. I think that early game like maneuver into with the horse into Archer Ranger was a big problem. It started the collapse of the left flank. But, uh, yeah... They're probably just talking it out now, but it's it's game at this point. Should be 10-4. Okay. I wonder if they want to be interviewed. I should probably ask them. All right. Let's see if I can mute myself here. All right. <clears throat> okay, so they are still playing, but uh, from the tone, I can tell that uh, you know they both know the game is pretty much over. And I'll ask them if they would like to be interviewed. If anyone who likes to hear their thoughts, Yeah, they're, they're playing through the round. They both realize the game's over, but they're just playing through the round. <clears throat> yeah, so as predicted, Flamin in the center, Stormcrows. I think I think Steve mentioned charging, actually, so he might go for a long bomb charge, but he should realize the game's over. Like, if he just sits, it's 10. Is Steve measuring a charge? Like, <laughs> why is he being so precise? 
the, he wants to table. Jor, you were correct. This man is a, is a maniac. Oh, he's going for the charge. Wow. And he's going to fail. And he's not going to end the game. Wow. Yeah, I don't know. That's, <laughs> to me, a bit... A bit much to like extend the game out just to like, table your opponent when you have the guaranteed win. But hey, each their own, you know. He passes the panic. Wow! Wow! Okay. <laughs> Il est vraiment méchant. Wow. That's true, Rich. This might matter for your matchup, yeah. So he's going to take some arrow shots. Um, three shots, looks like. The damage is inconsequential. Because what does he do? He's going to go first. If he heals, I mean, there's no good play here, really, right? He can heal back to five, then Drogo's in the flank with a war cry. Good thing you've been playing against uh, Targaryens, eh, Rich? <laughs> You'll have an idea of how to handle this. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, typically it's based on, like, your margin of victory. So typically... Uh, you know, it would just be like crushing wind versus crushing win. But I suppose if there's several crushing wins, I have to double check the tournament document. And the stats site honestly does all the matchups for you anyway. But I, I think it's possible that if there's several crushing wins, the way they match it up could be based on um, things that you've killed. So it might matter for determining matchups. Um, I'm trying to think. Who else got a crushing win? I don't think Chris took a crushing loss to Gordy. But yeah, definitely if if uh, if Steve takes the crushing win here, he will be very closely matched to Rich. Rich took a crushing win. Oh really? Okay. Oh you you didn't table. I thought you I thought you tabled. I, I checked your score, I thought it said wiped out. No? Okay. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sorry, you mean Chris's game. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yes, I thought you tabled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <clears throat> I wonder how uh, the rest of the matchups go. So I think, like, Chris Tryon is definitely a favorite to do really well. Uh, so is Brett, obviously. So is Cyrus. I think Cyrus has got um, Thranduil, our friend Anthony. And Cyrus has a uh, very good rep. He's a member of the Sunday Slaughter crew. Ah! <laughs> Oh my gosh! Oh, that that endless horror to prevent the tabling. Oh, Steve, <laughs> Steve, better not extend this to round six. <laughs> oh my lord, what a troll! That is hilarious. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, he's going in for. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's still me a crushing win with like twenty eight points destroyed, twenty seven points destroyed. Wow, he's killing him? Oh my god. Is Steve killing him with Stormcrow so that he can send his cavalry at the last unit for the full table? This is like this is like uh playing with a fly and like twisting each leg off, you know? Like this is just cruel. It'd be justice. It'd be justice if uh the Stormcrows don't kill off Oh, there's no way. I was gonna say it'd be justice if the Stormcrows don't kill off those two raiders, but Highly unlikely with a successful charge. Honestly, right? Jeez. <clears throat> Alright, I'm not even in the game. I'm right now on the Twitch stream. So, uh, let's see here. We got 
four hits. That should be enough to kill two raiders on fives. Oh my god, that was close. Because they barely die. Okay, now what does um, Boggler do? Does he just activate and back away to prevent the full tabling? Steve. <laughs> just take the points and win, bro. <laughs> Alright, so... Yeah, okay, so this will get him to 9. Yeah, so Steve can, could have easily won last round, right? So Steve is just extending the pain here. I want to hear the interview. I was all ready to talk to them, and like Steve here is just getting in the extra kills. <clears throat> uh, is that Unstoppable Advance? I mean, I'm again, I'm watching through the stream right now, so I don't really know, but I can check. Swift Reposition. Oh my gosh. And Assault Orders? Are they just talking about cards at this point? Can this cycle? This cannot cycle. Okay, so I don't know why he'd show this card unless they're just like talking the game out. Super Reposition could get a unit into charge range. I really wish as an observer I could measure things. Oh, is he saying that I don't have to get the objective? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So like what Steve might be trying to say here is I don't need to surge onto the objective. I can Swift Reposition on at any time to avoid the arrow shots. Perhaps. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I imagine that's what he's discussing here, because he's very me he's measuring very precisely the two inches. <clears throat> and then assault orders. I don't know why he's showing that off. Yeah, the game is going on for three hours. I, they should just they should just end at this point. <laughs> I don't I don't see the advantage of dragging this out so far. I mean, I guess you can say I didn't get tabled. You know, like Boggler can literally activate and just back up in the corner. And then if Steve doesn't go for the kill, it, it's kind of silly at this point. I mean, the game is clearly over. They're just... But again, if this is how they enjoy the game, then, you know, so be it. I possibly... I mean, it does matter. It is a secondary. It, it does matter. It often doesn't matter, but it might. So, to be fair, it, it might make a difference. But really, I don't know why it's taking so long. You know, there's only so many units left, there's only so many decisions to make. <clears throat> like, I don't even know what's happening right now. Like, what is going on here? So Steve charged, he killed, it should be Boggler's turn. I mean, are they talking it out? Like, what is going on? Boggler has NCUs in this unit to activate. NCUs cannot do anything relevant. He can grab more cards, but cards won't help because he can't play in the sword again this round. Oh, uh, he's got Val. Val's got a maneuver. That is legit. You never know what a maneuver might do. You never know what a maneuver might do with Val. Um, can a crown zap be relevant? No. Yeah, with Illyrio and a bag open, crown zap is not relevant. 
yeah, I don't know. Boggler only has so many options. Yeah, but I popped into the conversation twice on Discord, and they're still they were they were talking things out still, so they were still into the game. <laughs> to me, it's a wrap. But uh, hey, you know, if you want to maximize secondaries, you got to maximize those secondaries. What could they be discussing right now? I wonder. I'm going to do a top-down view and just go back to the uh, stream. <clears throat> <coughs> so it's Bogler's turn to act. To me, he has Val as a significant move, and that's pretty much it. Val and the Raiders. Steve is Cav. Is this coercion <laughs> this collusion here how about we extend the round the game to round six so that you can bring on your second unit <laughs> oh my gosh please kill me uh yeah yeah mickey um it's hard to say there is definitely a lot of moves where you know, this scenario, I, I mean, I think the arrow part, shooting from the arrows, uh, shooting the arrows from the objectives is so significant um, that I would have definitely been shooting a lot more arrows. Um, and yeah, Steve just kind of rolled up one side. Those raiders that went too far forward, got shot, kind of opened up a hole, and then he just rolled through the hole with the flayed men and uh, and Drogo kind of tag teaming down the flank. <clears throat> and yeah, right now I, I really I don't know what they're discussing. I feel like I, you know the game should be over really at this point, and I don't know if they're seriously talking about extending the round till six to get more points for Steve. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and like Steve, I think actually made the first misplay. He marched onto the objective, and like free folk should have been shooting arrows all day at those archers, squishy archers. I don't know if Steve had the bag. I don't think he did round one. Maybe he did actually. He had round, I think he had the bag round one and two, but still, you know, I don't think there's many significant moves on the tactics board. He should have just been shooting arrows all day into those archers. All right, see you, Jort. Okay, I'm going to pop into the Discord and see what they're talking about, because I'm really curious. Like, this is taking forever. He's gonna take a moment to second. Okay, so the game is done. They talked out, I guess, the last little bit of the game. Oh, I shouldn't have exited. Oh, it's okay. But uh, I've got Steve and Bogler here, and uh, yeah, so I streamed the whole game. I was commenting all throughout, and uh, I think I should be able to save it somewhere so that uh, you guys can watch it later on. But yeah, if uh, you know, you guys can share with us your thoughts about how the game went and what you thought were relevant moves. Uh, so I don't know if Bogler's still here or not, but Steve, maybe you want to start off and tell us your thoughts about the game? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, uh, well, I, I knew it would uh, be hard for Bogler with uh, Free Folk and the lift he had uh, on that particular game mode and against 
a drawable list for sure. So um, the outcome is like he played a really good game, uh, but uh, it, I think I didn't expect the crushing victory, but um, I, I, I expected that I would have a good success. And he was not really lucky, and I was because at the beginning, the first round, uh, I had assault orders on my him, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and it's terrible that the blood riders moving six first round could go up to eighteen, and then after you can have an auto charge with assault orders at seven, you can almost go everywhere you want on the table and do a charge. It's pretty. Uh, it's aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I saw you move forward so far with the Blood Riders. I was, I was, I was surprised because, like, oh, you know, you have the yeah. Alpha Strike advantage. Yeah. I was wondering why you went so yeah. deep, and it made sense afterwards when yeah. you had the Assault Orders card. Yeah, yeah Blogger, are you there as well? I made, uh, I made a yeah. mistake uh, on my side putting the archers on the left table. Uh, the, the reason I did that is I thought he was putting like all his raiders at the other side of the table, but he's not. When he, I, I'm pretty sure that Bogler, when he saw that I've put the archer there, he changed his mind. So my archers wasn't really doing the job for the entire game. Uh, that was a mistake. Okay, sure. so Bogler, what are your thoughts, sir, about how the game went? Some moves that you uh, you know thought were good. Some moves that you thought were not so good. Um, that was an amazing game. Firstly, I wanted to say thank you to like Steve, which is kind of a funny story because we both live in Montreal and I actually just picked up the game. We actually just talked before and it's kind of surprising that my first opponent in this tournament that I signed up for is Steve that we've actually talked about before. Small world. What I did was, small world. I picked up, uh, uh, two box sets of free folk and i made a list out of that and i'm playing online to learn as i go i thought i had the activation advantage i thought that i did well kind of understanding how the setup went i thought i did well mirroring i thought the terrain we did well placing the tree in the middle and the bogs on one side i thought that would really slow down him and kind of channel him into like one lane which is what happened but i didn't think that the horses were going to be as fast as they did I made a mistake. I really didn't think that uh, he had a card with Drogo that lets him charge mm -hmm. after moving, mm -hmm. which is huge, oh, yeah. huge, huge. Yeah. And uh, just some other minor stuff like that, which I don't really think you can you can plan for with positioning. Uh, as a whole, I'm really happy with how they played. I think the free folk have a lot of stuff. I, I can't compete with an army that's going to heal 20 to 30 wounds over the course of a game. <laughs> well, that was rough. All that Illyrio healing, yeah. So I, I had some things that I had to do, and I honestly, there were moments to finish the game in round two and three for both of us, but we kind of stuck stuck around and grounded out to like five or six, so mm -hmm. it's a nice game. It was good. I think Drogo could have died, which would have changed some things. But yeah. if you don't kill him, obviously he just steamrolls into whatever he wants. Yeah, there was one and moment. Yeah, where that was I, good. I was. I thought you had a chance to kill Drogo. It's when you had, I think, three units surrounding him, and um, yeah. I wasn't sure if you were going to charge in Mance as your last activation into a sword as your first activation, trying to finish him. I guess you you decided you didn't have enough power to kill him, so you didn't want to risk Mance getting in there. Yeah, with swords, I'm still hitting on fours or fives. Mm -hmm. And I don't get the bonus hits from the Spearwives, which seems to be doing most of the work. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's true. And honestly, my card draw was so bad. I picked up Endless Horde in the beginning, and then I was denied twice. Oh, so you know what? I was which was about huge. That. Yeah, I with saw, field I control, the experience yes. field control twice. Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, so that, that I, I noticed field control played. I didn't see the Endless Horde card get pulled out, so I wasn't sure if you had counterplotted and the sword essentially, but you did, which is a real, real nasty, um, yeah, counter to unfortunately to one of the free folks' best cards. The the other thing I noticed that um, maybe you weren't so familiar with was the 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 castle wall rules. You know, I was really expecting more arrows being shot from the walls. Uh, I yeah. noticed that Steve marched onto the objective like round one, and I thought, oh man, I would totally shoot arrows into him, but uh, 
Didn't it's a game mode that I really appreciate, but every time I've played it, I never really spell my MCU on the charging volley. Uh, it, and my opponent never did too. It's, I think it, it, it can be good because any bobbler use it a bit. Um, and I had to move at one point my archers because I knew he would do it again and yeah. they would die. So uh, that's the first time that I really see it um, exploited. Um, but um, but it's, it can be good, it can be bad. It depends also on uh, what type of unit you have on, on the objective. Uh, yeah. Mine has really bad defense. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was painful for him yeah. um but for me i preferred my ncu doing other stuff like right. healing and attacking <laughs> yeah i i thought you might have shot some arrows um round one but you had assault orders which is why you saved it which exactly. made a lot of sense. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense cool yeah. well thank you for the game guys it was entertaining to well, watch um i think it's saved somewhere and i'll try and load it up into youtube or something like that and uh, for you guys to review and um, yeah, good luck on the rest of your game, Steve. You you might uh, you might be playing looks like Endline. Endline got a crushing win too, so we'll see how that goes. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. great. All right, gentlemen, thanks Take a lot. Care. Yeah, thanks. Thanks to you, Arya. Cool. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye bye. All right, folks. That's the end of the stream. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, and yeah, I'll leave some comments, I suppose, if I load it up on YouTube, see if uh, we can improve it for next time. All right, guys, have a good one. Bye-bye.